ready to rock ready to roll mm. but not both at the same time we haven't quite figured that out yeah it's um uncomfortable welk <laughs> <laughs> welk welcome to a very special live stream on the internet about um angry men and ladies who fight for a chair is that the title we're rolling with it's a working title okay part two part two so we're doing like a we're doing we're going through the characters in a song of ice and fire and we're figuring out who's good who's bad who's lawful who's chaotic like in dungeons and dragons except that the way we understand the chart is um wrong yeah, we have an uh, objectively wrong interpretation <laughs> of this chart, and we are misusing it specifically to aggravate you. Yeah, you. You. <laughs> Man, the comments on that... By the way, part one was on my channel. I'm yes. Gliders. Hello. Yes, welcome, Gliders, to the channel. Uh, oh, Well, I'll put a link to your channel in the comments and the description. Um, but that, we That's we, fine. We did part one... <laughs> We did part one on Gladys' channel, and we have already, as you can see, ranked a bunch of these, of the main characters of Game of Thrones. Very wrongly. Very wrongly on this chart. We're talking about the books, not the TV yeah. show, to clarify. And um, I think we kind of had a soft rule about how we're talking about characters at the like from the first book, as you can see from like Jamie being chaotic evil-ish. Um, you probably wouldn't put him there if you were talking about just the end of, like, Dance of Dragons or, you know, the people change over time, it turns out. It's kind of the, kind of one of the points of the book. Yeah, especially with folks like Tyrion and, yeah, Jaime are characters who change massively. And Victarion. I mean, Victarion's character growth, I mean, just look at how far that guy's come. He, it, like, he, he was kind of cross. Yeah, when he started out, wasn't he? Yeah, but he now, was kind of cross, and now he's just a friend to all. <laughs> I love describing <laughs> a barbarian Viking as kind of cross. He's he's just he's... a little upset, <laughs> just little, mildly tiffed. <laughs> it's a little ray of sunshine, isn't he? I love him. Um, someone in the live chat said that we should do this for. Dune characters, I think Dune or Expanse characters. We, you, I mean, you could apply this to any series. True, that's why the format took off. Is like it's applicable. People do this to real life people, which I, I, I don't know if I'd advocate that. But well, at the end of this series, we're going to rank ourselves on oh. this alignment chart, right? Oh, he <laughs> cannot wait. Do you want to talk about Viserys? We're going to rank each other, actually. Yeah, that, that, would be, that would be fair. I hope you'll rank me kindly. Viserys, I don't have any opinions on Viserys. So. Glidus, Glidus, who famously <laughs> has no interest <laughs> in Viserys Targaryen. Um, he's Daenerys' brother. He is blonde. He's angry. When well, we, we stan. I mean, some of us stan. <laughs> I, I think you stan Harry Lloyd more than you stan Viserys Targaryen. I... No, I actually do love Viserys in the show very much. Um, I there are a few subtle changes they made that just really tickle me. Casting Harry Lloyd as him is one that tickles me the most. Um, I don't know. Just look at him. Look at that face. <laughs> How could you say that face is evil? What 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 are the very biggest, easily? <laughs> what are the biggest changes that they made? Um, I don't know. I show? think he just seems a bit more sympath like um. um, 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 um I don't know, maybe this is the way that he um, portrays the twisted anger of Viserys. It's, it doesn't come off as like as callous. It's almost vulnerable. Yeah. That's how I think of Viserys. Yeah, I can see that. Like, like he does seem like he just genuinely has issues and is not yeah. in control of his behavior, as opposed to just being like a piece of shit like Joffrey, who's like kind of more deliberate about being horrible. Yeah. Yeah, I think Viserys, you know, his behavior is just a manifestation of the way he sees his place in the world. And to be real, like, he has been seriously slighted by the world. If you think about what he was told he was supposed to be versus what he has become. And that doesn't excuse the shit he does, obviously, but, you know, it's interesting. He's such an interesting dude. 
for for someone who's relevant for half of one of the books. Yeah. In- I, I, yeah. I think it's that thing that George does where he says, oh, you know, we need a character to be Daenerys' brother. And then he accidentally, like, falls in love with the character yeah. and makes them far more complex and interesting than they ever needed to be. I also really like in the future books when Daenerys is, like, um, recalling all the things she learned from Viserys and, like, how she would be really useless without <laughs> all of the knowledge and wisdom that... Her insane brother imparted upon her. It's really interesting. Like, that's such a strange duality, that he was a violent, abusive, manipulative cunt. Are we saying cunt in this stream? I I think that there's actually a minimum number of... Okay, good. We've hit the... (laughs) Close to hitting the quota. Uh, We are not even (laughs) beginning to get close to the cunt quota. Um, The cunt quota. The the cunt war. The CQ. And, um, yeah, that duality between him being that and him being, like, a wise tutor to his beloved sister, who he never actually did incest to. <laughs> <laughs> he only talked about doing it. Um, I mean, some of the wise advice that he gave was very suspect, though, right? I oh, mean, yeah. didn't he say that, you know, those those evil Lannisters and, and Ned Stark with these heart-like ice who was such a horrible dude, they stole the throne and there was no justification for any of it. And, like, I mean, some of the things that he taught Daenerys were wrong. Yeah. And, and that does harm Daenerys because it, like, feeds into her, like, morally simplistic, inaccurate... Uh, beliefs about Robert's Rebellion and stuff. So, like, I mean, I mean you know, I, I agree with your point that, like, it is cool that even though Viserys is a piece of shit, like, he has given valuable information to Daenerys that has helped her. Although, is that really a moral thing that we can judge? It's not, because, like, Viserys was never trying to help Daenerys. Viserys was just mouthing off. Yeah. <laughs> He's, like, come home from work and just yell at his <laughs> sister. About all the things he hates about the world. <laughs> and there was a long list of them, let me tell you. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you, you, you reckon she'd probably have figured out that dragons eat meat without him? Y- yeah, I mean, he, I mean, he he did not tell her useful dragon lore, did he? I well, mean, he like, didn't know too much himself. Yeah, to so, imagine. yeah, I, I, I feel like it's hard to argue that Daenerys is better off as a result of having Viserys in her life. I mean, I guess when Daenerys was really young... Like, how old was Daenerys when uh, Dari died and they were on the streets? Uh, she's old enough to remember weird things about it, so I don't know. Yeah. 37? <laughs> <laughs> I think my memory started really kicking in when I was 37. I can't remember, <laughs> any- I can't remember anything about being 36, I'll tell you that. Um, I... Busy year. Busy, yeah, you could say that. Um, Viserys... I I mean, the point I'm trying to make is that Viserys did help keep Daenerys alive when they were, like, having a tough time early on. Like, Daenerys would, might be worse off if not for Viserys. Although, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of ways that it could have gone for Daenerys, you know? I think that was probably Viserys looking out for Viserys. Oh, yeah. No, I, I think, that, like, like, I mean, he saw Daenerys as a future bride to produce Targaryen heirs, right? And then as, like, a pawn that he could trade for an army. Yeah, and he made it very clear uh, about his willingness to use Daenerys. So um, He made it, like, it's actually impressive how clear he made that. He made it so explicit that I almost wish he did, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, like, thanks for your um bluntness, but, um... Really wish you just hadn't said any of that stuff. So, he, well, here's the issue. Like, we know he's evil, but is he lawful or chaotic? Because, like, he wants to follow the laws of inheritance and inherit from his father, the king. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and he wants to enforce that inheritance by invading a continent with an army of barbaric raiders. That is true, but he is merely applying force... To, uh, a wound. <laughs> to to stop the bleeding. Yeah, it's it's medicine. It's to return the rightful king to the throne. I mean, I mean, also his his like chaotic nature. Oh yeah, he's very um, explosive as a person. Yeah, his his feelings are all over the place. His behavior is all over the place. So uh, yeah, he he's he's chaotic evil, isn't he? But I don't think he's like he's not Euron by a long shot. No, I, I mean what I mean what's the worst thing Viserys? Does like he threatens to kill Daenerys he while she's trades pregnant. Trades his sister into marital slavery. 
Yeah, and he very is like aware of that, like not being a good time for her. Yeah, because he sees the Dothraki as just these loathsome barbarians, and yet he gives his sister to them. Yeah, I mean, what wh- what else does he really do? He doesn't do much else, does um, he? Oh, I He's can't just... remember how exactly. Uh, this is the show poisoning my brain. So there's that scene in the show where he tries to steal the dragon eggs and Jorah stops him and he's like, oh, I'm a big man. And he's like, yeah, <laughs> fine, fuck you. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that did happen. It's just not depicted in the books. Yeah. Um, so he, yeah, he, he tried to steal her belongings and leave so that he could trade them for, you know, his own benefit. Seems pretty selfish and uh short-sighted <laughs> and, and he does constantly like nag daenerys um they're just saying nasty shit a lot doesn't he so yeah i i think that i agree that you know he's definitely not like euron level or ramsey level he, he i think that he's not as bad as cersei he doesn't like cersei like tortures kills a bunch of people yeah is he as bad as theon no no is he as bad as Tyrion? oh now that's that's now you're talking. Yeah, he's probably more chaotic than Tyrion. Yeah, I think he's more chaotic than Tyrion. Um, I mean, I mean, you know, like I, I just think of, like, it, was it in the TV show when he was dying and he said, "Oh, all I ever wanted was X. Like, all I ever wanted he was just wanted what the, was promised. The all I ever was wanted promised. was what he was told he would have." Um, yeah. Well, that's Viserys. He was like he spent his childhood being told that he would become something, and then it didn't happen. I mean, we all have disappointments, Viserys. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of things I want and don't have. Like what? A gold-plated Ferrari. I don't. Know. I'm good. Yeah, I, yeah. That's. <laughs> I don't. I mean, can you can you imagine like driving that? Like it would get the keyed maintenance so easily. That. Yeah. Does gold corrode? It would, just, like, it would rain and it would just... Yeah. Um, Not worth it. I, I think that, like, he doesn't kill a bunch of people like Theon does. That's true. He does, like, beat slaves, though. Does he beat slaves th- at Illyrio's Mance? I think that might be the show poisoning my brain again, as it so so often does. Is um, when he throws Uriah to the ground. No, that's that's a show thing. Ignore me. I think that he's actually more good than Tyrion, which might sound controversial. I, I mean, I mean, he, he he's. I had a lot of comments about where we put Tyrion on the last video, and it's like, I don't know, he 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 turned a dude into soup. Yes, <laughs> yes, and he also, you know, like like raped and threatened to rape and murder, and uh, like he's a big fan fire. of threatening to do some rapes. Yeah, and you know, he killed Shay, he the did. teenager who he like. He did exploited, do that. and she like in the books was like crying for mercy. So, so it's like yeah, Tyrion but, is a bad guy. Yeah, but she did sleep with her, his dad. So you even know. even as early as book three, Tyrion is a piece of shit. I, I think Tyrion should be down here. Honestly. Right, I'm, I'm glad that that move has your go go ahead. Put him next to Euron. <laughs> <laughs> did you have a lot of comments saying like a Tyrion's few. a good boy? A few yeah. people are just thinking of Peter Dinklage, like people who haven't like read the books recently. Other people say that I feel. Do we think Viserys is here? Like, like he's he's chaotic evil, but he's he's not like. Like, like Viserys is a loathsome person, but in terms of his actual actions, yeah. Like, and a lot of his actions are failed, right? Like, if he if he actually succeeded in invading Westeros, if he actually succeeded in like screwing over Daenerys, then maybe we would make him more evil. But like, he's just sort of a bad guy with bad intentions. He's sort of too incompetent to be super evil. You know, he's he's too pathetic to be super evil. Yeah, maybe that's why I relate to him so much. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been trying to like ineptly? Uh, Murder someone, Mr. You know, Magoo style. For... Despicable Me one, yeah. Gru's mission is to steal the moon or something. No, that's the other dude's. What's the dude's name? I haven't seen that movie in eleven years. Um, that's that's what I've been trying to do, is steal the moon. <laughs> copy the plot from a movie I haven't watched in a decade. <laughs> um, and that's why I relate to Viserys Targaryen. Okay. Well, if the moon disappears, I'll know why. <laughs> I feel like I've said this before, but like one of my favorite moments in like any story for some reason is when scott pilgrim in the scott pilgrim comic books 
punches a hole in the moon as like a sign of his love. But then the girl notices that there's two holes in the moon. <laughs> and it turns out that was, like someone else punched a hole in the moon previously. <laughs> like she wasn't the first or it was like some shit like that. And in the background, even in the Scott Pilgrim movie, there's a hole in the moon. Like a there's so much in detail moon. in that. Edgar Wright's a good boy. Maybe. I don't know. I don't <laughs> no, know him never met him. Thanks <laughs> for the super chat from Luke Draywalker, who says, uh, love this day already. You guys are awesome. Thank you, Luke. That's sick. That's super sick. So cool to hear. Uh, do you want to talk about uh, another great person? Drogo. Drogo. The Carl of the Dothraki Sea, who has never lost a fight until he met a pretty blonde, who was his downfall. <laughs> Like, can you imagine how much better Drogo's life would have been if he never met Daenerys? Um, yeah, he would have just kept on doing his he thing. He just would have kept on He's doing just, what he did yeah. and died at the age of 89. Well, actually, no, I guess not. Because, he would like, not have lived to 89. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah, these cars would not live long, would they? No. Not with um, incompetent doctors like Miri going around. Oh, famous medical, medical malpractice uh, Miri. As they call her. So Drogo's the Carl, the most powerful Carl in the Dothraki Sea, isn't he? Certainly one of the most renowned. And he's killed a lot of people. And he's raided a bunch of villages with these Dothraki horse riders. And they kill and they rape and they plunder. And uh, he has an apartment in Pentos, which is kind of weird. He has, like, <laughs> on the 10th floor, like, half. He he borders some accountant, and he, sh- he like encounters him in the elevator every time he comes home. Like a like like a co working space. <laughs> they go to the same gym. It's on the third floor. <laughs> Could you imagine Drogo in the gym? He'd be one of those guys who just like picks up the equipment, you know, like the whole machine. Just just <laughs> and that's benches. What he benches. The, yeah. Um, I always thought it was funny that Drogo has an apartment. Like like I don't like does he. Does he stay there, you know? Does he Does he hang? I wonder does if it's like a timeshare. Because, you know, yeah. Pentos is going to accept a bunch of different roaming factions yeah. throughout the, you know, each cycle. So, you know, Drogo's there in these couple of weeks when he marries Daenerys, and maybe shortly after that, Illyrio accepts another Carl who comes on by, or, um, you know, some other, you know, Prince of Mir or something. Yeah, no, I think that's legit. Like, there's a lot of... It's a timeshare apartment. Because, like, how many days in the year is Drogo in that apartment? And so, you know, once he's done, they just brush the horse hair off the couch and then wait for the next guest to arrive. I wonder if Drogo knows that they do that. He'd be mad. I I, I think that, like... I mean, I mean, someone in the live chat is already saying this, that, like, it, it, it's tough to rank him between lawful and chaotic. Because, like, we could say he's chaotic because he is a raider who attacks and kills and murders um, and causes chaos. But you could argue that he's lawful because he is, like, the pinnacle of the Dothraki, like, customs and culture. Yeah, and that like, is their code. This yeah. is what they do. And he does, like, follow rules about, like, you know, for instance, like, you know, when a Dothraki falls off their horse, they are no longer a Carl, And there's all these, like, rules and customs about how you be a Dothraki. And he follows all that rules. He, he embodies the ultimate of it because he's never been he's never lost a fight etc so is he lawful or is he chaotic okay well we put asha as chaotic because she raids and kills and plunders and all that and that's just the thing that the ironborn do so i think it'd be wrong to um yeah change our tune on that just for drogo is drogo worse than asha in the terms of the chaos that they cause i would say yes I think like I think that like the specifics of Ash's raids and stuff are just not described that much. Whereas Drogo, we have seen him like attacking and killing and raping the Lazarine. Um, so yeah, I guess Drogo is worse than Asher. Yeah, he's yeah he's worse than Asher. Yeah. Um, in terms of good or evil, though, like he's not doing it because he wants to kill God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he's not Euron, yeah. and he's not Ramsey. Like, 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 there's nothing about Drogo where he like enjoy. Well, no, I mean he enjoys. No, he totally, yeah, he, he does enjoy. He's really good at doing what he does, and he revels in it. Yeah, you yeah, know he's a bad guy. 
Not a cool dude. I mean, I mean, the, like, like Drogo is not like very like humanized as a character. Like, it's not like we learn about Drogo's like inner feelings. Drogo's like inner feelings and like the emotional <laughs> underpinnings for his actions. Every time he slays a man, he thinks, oh, "Why must I do this? I only do this because my father didn't love me." He does it to impress Daenerys. <laughs> yeah, he like, yeah, maybe the whole story is bullshit, and he never actually has killed anyone, but he just wanted to impress his new wife. Aw. <laughs> oh my god, so he's like an Aladdin, Prince Ali type thing, where he just has all the trappings of a brilliant yeah. cow. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he's just like hired these other Dothraki. Oh my god, I love that. I love like... that as an idea. That's so dumb, also, but like, imagine <laughs> Illyrio is like, yeah, no, 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 we're gonna marry you off to some Carl, don't worry about it, and it's actually just this guy that he found. <laughs> <laughs> Illyrio has enough gold to hire a bunch of, like, actors bunch of like off work off work character actors to pretend to be Dothraki. And like if you're Illyrio, you don't want to put Daenerys in danger. You want to have control over Daenerys. Yeah. So the Illyrio spiracy is <laughs> that Drogo's entire Carl entire actors, they're paid actors. Kalisar are all just like out of work actors. <laughs> or they're like from previous Kalisars that had broken apart, and then he was like, hey, I'm putting together a crew. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, I'm in. <laughs> what, what, what's the line? No, that's it. Is that it? Uh, you son of a bitch. Yeah, you son of a bitch, I'm in. <laughs> I, lo- I love your commitment to the Khalasa. Well, that's what it is. Glidasir is a real um, duolingo expert. That's right. At Dothraki. Well, it's only because the owl fucking stalks me. <laughs> <laughs> you see him too? <laughs> in my dreams. <laughs> uh, okay, I- I'm pretty happy with his placement for Drogo. You know, yeah, he's he's he's, he's pretty evil. He he kills and raids. Um, he's probably more evil than Theon. Yeah, well, he's probably more evil than Jaime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, pretty yeah. Again, again with Jaime and Cersei, it kind of depends like which part of their story you're talking about. Yeah, but, yeah. All right. I, I, I need to think of this as, like, logarithmic, because Drogo's quite close to Euron on the evil scale there, but just just know that, like, th- there's a thousand units of evil in between them. <laughs> yeah, Euron really belongs, like, off the chart. Yeah. <laughs> He's on a separate chart, Yeah, is how evil he is. Thanks for the super chat from Glenn, who says, My two favourite YouTubers. Thanks, a great That's morning. That's so nice. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you for saying that. Let's talk about it. Like some people say Jaw, some people say Geor. I said Jaor. Jaor. Yeah. That is wrong, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way that's right. <laughs> but I love it. Geor. Geor? I think it's just George, right? But without the J. So it's just Jaw. Like tomato. Tomato. Whenever someone says Geor, I just hear Eeyore. From Winnie the Pooh. Well, that's exactly what I'm trying to evoke. Okay. Everything happens to Geor. <laughs> it's always cold at my house. <laughs> There's only men here. My crow keeps waking me up in the morning. No! <laughs> Gorn! <laughs> <laughs> Have you considered a career as a crow impersonator? It's crossed my mind more than you might think. <laughs> Um, George, George's a good guy, isn't he? Like, he's a good mentor to John. He he cares about the Night's Watch. He cares about, like, protecting the realm from the White Walkers. Like, he puts his life on the line by leading the yeah. the ranging north, he, even though he's an old man. He doesn't afraid of anything. Yeah. I think he's a cool guy. Yeah, I, I like him. Well, what exactly happened with the sword Longclaw? Because, like, Jorah oh left God. Longclaw... Yeah, it's kind of weird, honestly. So when Ned was, like, going to kill Jorah for selling slaves, captured dudes yeah. to slavers, um, Jorah was, like, out of there. And he... But before he left, he did he give Longclaw to his... No, he gave it to Mage. Did he give it and to Mage? And then Mage gave it to Jor, I think. Was Jor. That, Jor. Was, that, was that before or after he joined the Night's Watch, though? 
Oh, um, well, Jorah was the Lord of Bear Island at the time, so Jor was definitely in the yeah, Night's Watch. Yeah, yeah. So, so why would Mage give Longclaw to Jor on the wall? Because Even like she's a warrior woman. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think she's like an axe sort of a lady, yeah, isn't she? But that's probably it then. Like, I have no need for Valyrian steel. With, like, when I can do this with an axe. But is Mage's expectation that Longclaw will be given back to the Mormonts after? Jor dies. We would have to ask her. Because my concern would be that if I was mage, would be that Longclaw will just go from the Mormont ancestral sword to the Night's Watch ancestral sword. The Lord Commander sword. sword. Which is kind of cool. It is kind of cool, but like no one would want to give up their Valyrian steel, especially not like the the poor Mormonts. I don't know. When Samuel Tiley stole Heart's Pain from his father, he didn't (laughs) seem to mind that much. (laughs) Uh, Uh, I remember when that happened in season seven. When Sam stole his father's sword. Season six. Season six. Yeah. And I remember thinking, like, wow, that'll be... I remember saying, oh, that'll be cool and interesting <laughs> when when his dad, Randall Tarly, comes to take his sword back. And nope. Nothing happened. Nope. I haven't... Oh, why didn't they do that? <sighs> it's a bit like those books that Sam took from the library that never meant anything. Yeah, he did a Harry Potter. He snuck in and stole some... some forbidden knowledge and then and then he became grand maester <laughs> see, see, <laughs> see, see this is this is why the uh piss take video series on the youtube channel glidus that you all need to go and subscribe to never heard of him never heard of him go subscribe to glidus in the video description is so good is that it reminds you of all of these just deranged, smooth-brained <laughs> plot decisions that were made in those weird middle seasons of Game of Thrones that you just forgot happened. Because, like, everything that happened in the middle seasons of Game of Thrones, you could always excuse by saying, well, maybe it'll add up to something in the end. Like, maybe it'll lead to something. I think the reason why everyone turned against Game of Thrones in Season 8 is because it no longer had that excuse. Like, when it's the ending, yeah. you can never say, oh, well, maybe it'll make more sense in retrospect. And here we are, in retrospect. Um, <laughs> and, uh, no, Kinvara didn't show up again. Shit. <laughs> Can't believe it. It would have been so easy to have Kinvara and the Volantine Red Priests dropping some mad fire magic, like, with the fiery hand, the warriors of the fiery hand, and, like... Like, they spent, they spent a bunch of time in the East, in Game of Thrones, and in Volantis, we spent and, like... S- six seasons... <laughs> Like yeah, like in Essos, Volantis in particular was like really prominent, and they so could have made some like red priest warriors come in, but they didn't. Anyway, oh good. Anyway, new show. Don't worry about it. New show. Um, I think Jor is lawful good, isn't he? Uh, yeah, yeah, I would think so. Because he adheres to the laws of the Night's Watch and the mm. laws of you know he's a, he's a pretty conventional dude. Yeah. Um, you have to wonder. I mean, this is, like, speculation, and we can't use it to, like, grade him. But w- w- how did he wind up in the Night's Watch in the first place? Yeah, it is a great question. He, I really um, hope we get an answer to that, because it's quite interesting. He so, w- Was he a second son? No, he was. he's, he's he, the Lord of Bear Island. Yeah. Maybe he killed his brother to get the lordship. Maybe he made stuff up on YouTube.com. Oh, you should go to the wall if you do that. <laughs> Maybe he clickbaited. Can you, I, I cannot think of a demographic less qualified for hard labor on the wall than YouTubers. <laughs> you don't think we could dig out the ice tunnels? Could you imagine a bunch of vloggers and TikTokers? <laughs> Logan Paul. <laughs> like, I, I, I start complaining when it goes below 20. Oh, yeah. You put me on the wall. It's not going to be pretty. Yeah. <laughs> o- although there would be some very entertaining like vlog content from Castle Black, I reckon. You think Logan Paul's going to walk out into the haunted forest and um? <laughs> 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 oh, that's bad. Thanks. It's good. Yeah, nah, put put him in lawful good. Yeah, he's lawful good. I decree it. All right. It is thusly decreed. Um, is he? He's not. I mean, he's not as amazing as Ned Stark, is he? I mean, I mean, I mean, like Joe like walks the walk. Like he might not be as like like cool as some other characters, but like he's there on the wall, leading yeah, the watch, doing, doing the shot. thing. Yeah, like he's riding. looking out for the realm. I think I think he might be as lawful good as Ned. Yeah. Like I I, I guess 
Like, I mean, a lot hinges on how he ended up on the wall. And we just don't know that. Yeah, no clue. I don't think there's any point speculating. Like, it could be something completely innocuous, or it could be that he murdered the family of gazelles. But one thing I want to bring up is that when John initially deserts the watch... <laughs> you said gazelles? Yeah. Um, <laughs> he went to South Euro- Long story. Um, so, John intends on deserting the watch when he learns that Ned's been captured and yeah. John's gone and Rob's gone to war. Yeah. Um and Jail once John comes back, he's he doesn't punish him. Well he, he, he does slide. a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, he lets that slide. And he lets a lot of things slide. But I think that's not him that's him like viewing the law as something that's like, you know, well uh kind of impractical. Yeah. Like it'd be impractical to pa- punish every night's watchman who slipped off to Molestown for a bit of Sally on the side. And uh, 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 Sally on each side, even if you got, if you got the coin. Um, I, I think that yeah. I mean, the reason why Jaw plays a little bit fast and loose with the rules of the watch is because he is so dedicated mm-hmm. to the watch. Um, yeah. Like the realities, the pragmatic realities at the Night's Watch is that things aren't perfect. People aren't perfect. You know, they're not getting the best recruits. They're not getting enough support, so they got to work with what they have. Um, so, yeah, like, he does bend the rules of the watch, but he does it because of his dedication to the watch, I feel. Like, he, he, he he's, he's what it should be. What a cool dude. What a cool dude. Speaking of cool dudes. Mm. <laughs> Speaking of cool dudes, we have a super chat from Patrick, Patrick <laughs> Mitchell, famous good dude, who says that what Jamie has done in the, in the books is like an average day for Drogo. Which I think is a good call. I, I, is, I think yeah. Drogo does not consider the day complete until he's defenestrated at least one <laughs> eight-year-old child. And and probably rooted some some blood relatives. I I, I wouldn't know. Um, Be tough to keep track for them, wouldn't it? I think Drogo is definitely more evil than Jamie, yes. Uh, thanks for the donation from Simcoe, who says, YouTube won't let me send super chats, so I'll do it this way. Uh, you guys should do some sort of post-episode discussion streams for House of the Dragon together. We had not thought about that. That's such a good idea. Have you considered talking about House of the Dragon when House of the Dragon is on? I was literally just going to release that beginner's guide video and then not talk about it for maybe three or four years. I was thinking of just having a holiday and maybe just... Oh, that sounds so good. Just watching some, like, Law and Order reruns for the next ten weeks. Maybe go over Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I've been meaning to... I unironically have been meaning to watch Buffy. Oh, the me too. Vampire Slayer. Yeah, it, I've oh. heard it's great. Well, when are we going to do a Swift Colitis uh, well, Buffy review? Right now, let's fuck this. That'd be awesome. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, thanks, Simcoe. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think I think we will do some House of the Dragon chats at some point. That'd yeah, be cool. Probably. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do immediately after it comes out. Like, because everyone's going to be doing their own stream, right? Yeah. And we all have the same audience, so it's going to be split. 40 ways. Uh, oh. I think it would be cool if there was just, like, the council of all Game of Thrones oh YouTubers. Oh, my God. Like, it would be an absolute car crash. But having, like, 20 <laughs> Game of Thrones YouTubers all in the same Zoom call just saying, Well, the thing about Jaharis is... Oh, my God. I think I think that would, I think that should happen at least once. I, I would actually like to do that when The Winds of Winter comes out. Like, oh, when The Winds shit. of... Like, like, when I see that there's a release of The Winds of Winter... Like an, like an announcement date. I, I just want to like open a Discord server and just have every Game of Thrones YouTuber just just shouting, <laughs> just screaming all at once, just to capture eleven years of of waiting in one. That sounds incredible. That would be so much fun. If anyone could organize it, it's uh, you'd probably have a good shot at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, someone does. So, someone will sort it out. Yeah. Um. Thanks for the super chat from Gina, who says Kia Aura from New Zealand. You guys sound like Kiwis. Thank you for the donation from Puck, who says all resurrected characters in A Song of Ice and Fire are basically li- living corpses. So mm-hmm. when John returns, he'll be stuck in a 16-year-old body for the rest of his days. Mm-hmm. I think I saw that in an anime once. I don't see a happy ending for him, even if he survives till the end. What do you think are the consequences? Uh, Glidus, do you think uh, death might have negative repercussions for Jon Snow? Well, I saw on a telly show once that yeah. when you die and come back, you know, it's kind of just... You know, you've just gone through the washing. You know, you're just a bit turned out. You've been through the ringer. Yeah, you've. You're That's like... really all. That, all that happens, though. Yeah, I mean, you you see God possibly. 
I, I thought it was interesting in the Game of Thrones show when, like, um, Melisandre was like, what did you see, John, when you were dead? And he said, I saw nothing. Nothing, I saw, no, nothing at all. I saw nothing at all. Just, like, the 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 um, narrative weight of this TV adaptation. <laughs> and um, Beric says the same thing when she asks him in season three. She said, he's, yeah, she's like, well, what, what, what's going on? What have you seen? And he's like, I've seen the darkness. And I was like, well, when was the last time they played in the Riverlands? They haven't toured since 2006. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to see being niche again. Oh, true. Uh, um, I, I, no, I, I legitimately have like, like an issue with that because I think that the Game of Thrones TV show is nihilistic. Like, like I think part of why people hated Game of Thrones season eight was because there was just no meaning. There was no sense of meaning at the end because, like, Daenerys, who was the revolutionary who wanted change, just was bad, and so she died. And Jon, who was like secretly the 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 heir to the throne and who was such a hero, just left and was exiled. And and like just nothing went anywhere. And like and like you know the king is Bran, who like no one knows who he is or what he stands for. Stands for being a poor choice of phrase. <laughs> uh, I, I, it was an accident, uh, much like his defense. Okay, um, my point being that I think that like 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 Game of Thrones was morally nihilistic in a really like unsatisfying and depressing way that I don't think the book's ending will be. I think George tries to see the good in the world. George is a romantic. Yeah, he's a naive little sucker. He, he's <laughs> just an eight-year-old. <laughs> that that <laughs> idiot. <laughs> Believing in the Good goodness in the thing. human heart. <laughs> Think, Sucker. <laughs> you rube. <laughs> that's what that's what big big feeling wants you to think, George. Yeah, it's a cope. Feelings aren't feelings are a cope. Cope and seethe, George. <laughs> Sucked in. It's all a big psyop. Art is a psyop to make you think feelings are real. <laughs> It's funded by the C. <laughs> it all came out of MK Ultra. Yeah, before then, no one actually. <laughs> there was no art. There was only pictures of houses on hills. <laughs> that was and and like hymns. There was hymns and there was paintings of houses. Some hymns, some hers. <laughs> Is that a lyric? <laughs> you you sound like you're about to rap. We'll work on it. All right. <laughs> um, so thank you for the donation from Puck. Uh, and thanks for the super chat from Bonesaw McGraw, who says, My pet theory, theory, my pet theory is that the Red Lamb, one of Barristan's lads, is the son of Miri Mazdur and Marwan. The fuck? The kid is a Chad, and the two have met. Thoughts? Um, okay, so what you've done there is you've identified that two characters have met, and that there's a third character, and that's really all that there is. I mean, look, you can only fit so much supporting evidence into a super chat, Gladys. Yeah, true. Um, I mean, he is cool. But He's a lamb and the Lazarine, the, the lamb people. Yeah. <laughs> is Miri Mazda... I mean, I think we were talking about this in the last yeah, we Like, were. Is Miri Mazda even from the um, Lazarine? There's no way of telling. Yeah. Um, yeah, all right. Yeah, I mean, so so to clarify for those who haven't read A Dance with Dragons recently. Including myself. Uh, Barristan Selmy, the bold, Big B, Big Baz, Big Baz of the Lazza, um, or Big Baz of the Sazza, I suppose, um, trains a bunch of uh, young men to be knights. Um, Tumko Lo, the Red Lamb, Larak the Lash. Is Larak the Lash one of them or is that someone else? That might be someone else. Um... Uh, <laughs> And the Red Lamb is a cool guy, and he's fighting in the Battle of Marine. And um, I can't think... I, I mean, like, Mar Marwin is a big dude, right? He's a Mastiff. He's tough. Yeah. So maybe... He's, he's like a football hooligan. <laughs> he's like a football <laughs> hooligan who got a master's degree and a tinfoil hat and decided to wreak havoc. That's Marwin the Mage. What a legend. I, I love Marwin. He's so much fun. He he's one of the most memorable characters in A Song of Ice and Fire. He appears and in he's two paragraphs. <laughs> Two paragraphs, but what a paragraph! They yeah, are. Um, yeah. Look, I like your theory, Bone Saw. Yeah, no, it's true. You're right. You're right. You're correct. You've got validation from YouTubers. <laughs> and really, is there anything more valuable is in there... this world? 
here in this mortal coil is there anything you could value more than that that's a line from the hot day trailer isn't it what what is this mortal life if not the pursuit of validation <laughs> from youtubers <laughs> Alistair von British asks, what is your guy's favorite dragon? I have quickly fallen in love with long boy sausage dog I Caraxes. I love Caraxes. Yeah. I want to pit that whole freakish neck. <laughs> <laughs> Caraxes is pretty cool. It's so goofy and I love it. I mean, I mean, the dragons don't have all that much like personality, if we're being honest. So right? far, at least. Yeah. I mean, it's kind we of... We might learn more. It's kind of cool, the story about, like, Silverwing with Alisane flying to the wall and Silverwing not wanting to fly beyond the wall and yeah. stuff. Yeah. That's kind of cool. I, I love Vermithor and Silverwing. Yeah. It's really cute. Yeah, it, it is. It is super cute. It's like a little uh, dragon uh, romance. And I really do think... I, I think I was telling the truth when I said that um their relationship is one of the most stable in George's entire body of work. Jaharis and Alisone. No, Vermithor and Silverwing. <laughs> well, yeah, they, no. didn't, they didn't quarrel. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I like that. Um, I like ca- I like Sheepstealer and, and Cannibal. Cannibal's so cool. I mean, Sheepstealer is cool because, like, as you all might know, um, Sheepstealer was ridden by the dragon seed Nettles, who then disappeared along with her dragon. And the theory is that uh, she may have led to the formation of the Boned Men, who are the mountain clansmen who Tyrion meets in Book 1, Season 1, who, like, uh, apparently uh, had a fire witch who, yeah. like, started their tradition of, like, burning people. So um, so it's actually, like, a very legit theory that this dragon may have started that mountain Which clansman super culture. Cool. It's so cool. Mm-hmm. Neat little niche bit of world building. Although the dragon's almost definitely dead because it's been 170 years well Beleriand was hundreds of years old he, Beleriand was okay at minimum he was 200 and something like low 200s when he died and there's and, no but he could have been much older than yeah, that yeah there's no we, we have no idea what like yeah. the upper limit on dragon I don't lifespan know, I is I feel like if there was a fucking immense dragon living in the Vale they would probably know well one of the things in Fire and Blood is that, you know, the dragons who are old are described as, like, very sleepy and sluggish yeah. and they don't do much. Aww. Aww. Um, so maybe, like, they don't eat as much. They must eat less when they're less active. And here's the thing. What what happened the one time that someone got on Balerion and didn't really have a direction of where to go, didn't have a control over Balerion, mm. didn't really know where, like, have, have a way of commanding Balerion where to go? What happened? He went home. He went to Valyria. So where would Sheep Stealer go? Probably Dragonstone. I was thinking Crackclaw Point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just it's gonna it's gonna visit Skagos real quick. Uh, <laughs> just nip down for some smokes at Skagos and never come back. <laughs> you know, he's looking for the fucking crab, the fermented crab Aphrodisiac. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's an old dragon, you know. That's a great. I love talking about dragons, but yeah, Caraxes looks the most fun. In the show so far, yeah, I think Hot D ha- has done a good job of, and, and also like I Vega. Really commend that. There's like there's like one shot of Vega yeah. in, in one of the new trailers. She looks really um, really <laughs> aggressive and like flabby. Yeah, she's like, like, fucked like, up <laughs> <laughs> in like the best way possible. Yeah, yeah so ragged and terrible. Yeah, I, I think we will have like more opinions about dragons during Hot D. We could do a whole stream just talking about dragons. Absolutely. We 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 will at some point, I'm sure. Thank you for the super chat from Meta Texture, who says, Are you familiar with the manga Berserk? Considering your analyses of fantasy material, I think you'd get something out of it in multiple regards. Have you have you read or seen Berserk, Glass? I've seen plenty of frames from Berserk and they all look incredible, mm. but I've never actually read it myself. Mm. I watched, like, one episode of Berserk. Like, I think the climactic episode with the god hand, nasty, satanic... Uh, uh, yeah, try not to be incident. too specific with, your, so- with uh, your spoilers. Well, I feel like my description could describe several episodes of Berserk, <laughs> probably. Um, and many other man- anime. <laughs> yeah, right? I, 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 I think it looks cool. I th- I think maybe my like limits on like how much grim dark I can stomach, you know, <laughs> like a song of ice and fire is like already there sometimes. Yeah. You know? I-, I haven't really watched much anime, but Berserk does look cool. Someday it'd be cool to check it out. Um, 
Thanks for the super chat from Musa, who says, Woke up at 4am to see you guys were streaming. In A Game of Thrones, it's stated that Jor joined the Night's Watch because he was getting old and he wanted his adult son, who was in his prime, to become Lord. I don't know about that, because, like, Tywin Lannister's old. <laughs> and he hasn't run away to join the Night's Watch. Like, I, I get that that's what's um explained in the text, but, you know, a lot of things are explained in the text, aren't they? Yeah, I think that's exactly the sort of thing that, like, George could create, like, some sort of tragic, secret, complicated, personal reason why it happened. Um, I mean, like, like, like one of the mysteries that I am most intrigued about in A Song of Ice and Fire is, why did Benjen join the Night's Watch? Mm. And, like, there's a lot of good theories that it might be related to R plus L equals J or the Tony of Harren Hall, and um, some people think he might have just been gay, but, like, you know, would that make you want to join the Night's Watch? Probably not. So, yeah. Maybe, I mean, I guess, you know, obviously, like, in the North, they, like, respect the institution of the Night's Watch more than, you know, the Lannisters do. So maybe Jor really did just, like, think that the Night's Watch was important and... Well, how, cold, how old could he have been? Because, so, Jorah won the tourney at Lannisport when he was already Lord of Bear Island, right? Did he? I think so. Or was he just a sir, like, in the um, Storming of Pike? I don't think he was a lord then. Was he knighted after That's the That's right, he was Pike knighted, yeah. Attack. There yeah. and then by Robert. Um, and I think the Tony Lannisport was after that. And then, and then he sold those dudes into slavery after then, because he was married to Lynness. Um Yeah, maybe, J- maybe Joe was already old enough to be thinking of stuff like that, so maybe... Make a video, Gladys. The secret truth of Geo. The Mormont timeline doesn't add up, and here's why. I mean, it is fucking weird that some Bravosi... No, who was it that some slave traders were on Bear Island? What? Yeah, that makes no fucking sense. Because you'd have to go around the entire Westerosi continent. Yeah, exactly. Um, So either that's an immense world-building mistake, or, you know, something very... um conspiratorial yeah i mean maybe the, i mean c- could the slavers have been from the ironborn um i don't know if it's specified where they were from because the geography would make more sense if they were from the iron islands yeah i can't remember if it's mentioned that they were like mirish or something like that though probably not should we talk about old old boy jeff old Joffleberry, <laughs> jimmy J. Um, Joffrey Baratheon, I mean, like, I would not invite him to my ice cream social. Oh, most certainly not. Because he'd eat all the good flavors. And then fucking kick all the cats he could find and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a, he's a, he's a sadist, is that the word? Yeah. He likes inflicting pain. He's a big fan of that. Um, Joffrey is just, he's just fucking evil. Yeah. I mean, like, like I, I guess we can give him a tiny bit of... That art is so good. Isn't it? Megali Villeneuve just does, like, the best Song that of Ice so and Fire brilliant. art. And it's just gorgeous. And, and, and it does highlight that, like, one of the differences between books and show is that Joffrey is, like, tall and handsome. Oh, he's so sexy in the books, apparently. I shouldn't say that about a 14-year-old boy. <laughs> like, <laughs> like uh, Jack Leeson. Is it Jack Leeson? Oh, yeah. Jack Leeson, like, does a great job of being Joffrey. But his appearance is not like in the books. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, I do feel that since Joffrey's young, it's like he's not quite as morally capable as someone culpable as like someone like, you know, Euron or Ramsay or whatever. Um, but he's definitely evil. Is, is he lawful or is he chaotic? I mean, he, I mean, he uses his the, the law of him being king as, you know, that's that's what he uses to justify his crimes. Yeah. And te- I mean, he doesn't break any laws, right? Because, like, he's the king. Can the king break a law? I'm sure no one's ever thought about that. Um, it's just kind of moot, because he makes the laws. Yeah, he's in charge. But, you know, he, he never uses that power to, you know, genuinely govern and, you know, increase order in any way. He uses his power to inflict pain and sow chaos and... Wow. 
I think that Joffrey does a great job of restoring order when those Kingslanders come to the walls of the Red Keep and they're like demanding food and he chases them off with his crossbow, thus restoring order. True. That's really um noble of him. <laughs> it's a little bit like when uh, Prince Daemon Targaryen uh, enforces order in King's Landing by inflicting violence upon the people Yeah, as the commander of the Gullcloaks. Lawful good. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think he's like super chaotic. I mean, I mean, yeah, he is pretty gung ho with the crossbow. Um, he loves that thing so much. Just shooting it's his favorite toy, rabbits and shit. But I, I had a like robot dog when I was a kid. Oh yeah, Joffrey had a crossbow. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could attach a crossbow to your robot dog. Did you see that? Um, was it a William Osmond video? No, it was I did a thing. Um, where they put a gun on a robot dog. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I think I saw, like, a gif from that or something. That's fucked up. Yeah, well, I mean, you just know that, like, militaries have been doing that for oh, yeah. decades. Oh, yeah. And the only reason they don't do it in wars is because, you know, a recruit is cheaper. More expendable. Or being topical again. Um, Fantasy so- series from 26 years ago. <laughs> Is it really 26 years? Yeah. Is this series a quarter century old? Yeah, Game of Thrones came out in 1996. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> um, He's evil. He's, he's like... I, I feel like he's like neutral evil. Yeah, I, I also think that... I, I probably wouldn't put him as low as Drogo. Yeah, he, yeah, although, he's... like, Drogo actually, like... You know, he, he, his evil has an end... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Drogo kind of has some semi justification. Whereas Joffrey really is just causing pain for nothing more. Like, it's not even like political he just violence enjoys for pain. him. Like, it's not even violence for political ends with him, usually. Like, I it's mean, really. Just... Having Sansa beat is pretty politically dumb, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, his violence is not only harming others, it's self destructive yeah. violence. What a king. <laughs> Someone in the live chat, Kaiser, just said that Megali Villeneuve has a Wikipedia page. Who would have thought? Hmm. Probably does wonderful Star Wars art as well. You know you've made it when you have a Wikipedia page. Oh, yeah. That's my... <laughs> Everything I do in life is <laughs> guided towards accomplishing that. Like that little finger scene. Whenever I make a decision <laughs> in life, I ask myself... I myself. I... <laughs> Will this get me closer to seeing that picture in the world? <laughs> a picture of me. In the info box on the <laughs> <laughs> Wikipedia. I want my face on the Wikipedia template. And you by my side. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck. Yeah, he's a bad dude. Joffrey, yeah. What about his um sister? Marcella Baratheon. Um well she's famously um alive. <laughs> She's very alive. She has less of a face than she did previously in the books. She got she got some of her face slashed off by Gerald Darkstar Edgelord Dane. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> I think I I think she uh tripped and hit, uh, hit a doorknob. And they made up that story yeah. cuz she was embarrassed about it. Is that what you think? <laughs> No, look. I mean, I mean, she's nice. She like, like, unlike Joffrey, she's nice she's to just Tyrion. A decent kid. I mean, I mean, she's what, like, like seven years old, isn't she? Oh, I think she's nine. Yeah, um, yeah, she's older than Tommo. Yeah, she's then younger than Joffrey. Old Tommo. Um, she plays chess with Tristane Martell. Yep. Like she, like she seems like she's like a generally good natured person, but like she hasn't really made any decisions in her life. Yeah. So she's just got to be like a light lawful good, right? This character is a child. <laughs> I think she's a light lawful good. Sure. I couldn't argue with that one way or the other. I'd say that she, I'd say that she's slightly less good than Bran because Bran kind of does semi stuff, does things. Yeah. yeah. When he's Lord of Winterfell. Yeah. All right. Tommen Baratheon. I love Tommen. Don't you love this art? It's beautiful. Look at look at Lilsa Pounce. <laughs> right? <laughs> Little Pounce has a hat. Aww. This art is by Nalustra Palustra. That's fantastic. 
so Tolman is is a little baby king. Yeah. And, and he stamps whatever Cersei tells him to stamp. And he admires Loras. And he kind of wants to, like, do stuff and be a knight and a big boy. Um, Aww. And uh, he doesn't like how his grandfather's corpse stinks. Mm-hmm. What else do we know about Tom? Uh, well, that's basically... Mainly the corpse stinking thing is the important thing. He, <laughs> he's he's decidedly not a sadist like Joffrey. No, he it doesn't seem like he likes inflicting pain. He likes his cat. He likes cats. <laughs> Um, is this a character? <laughs> <laughs> it's a little kid. He's he's just good. Yeah, he's, he's a good boy. He's with Marcella, and you know he likes listening to his mum. Um, I I think that Tommen is less lawful than Marcella because Marcella sort of goes along with things, but Tommen actually like backtalks his mum sometimes. Well, yeah, I I see what you mean. Although we're not privy to, you know, whatever conversation might have led Marcella to being shipped off to Dawn. Like, maybe maybe she did talk back against that. Who knows? Yeah. Well, we can only go by what we've got in the text. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. I, I, think, that's, I think that's reasonable. Um, thanks for the super chat from Sharif, who says, Why no Westworld videos? Uh, I haven't seen Westworld Season 4 yet, and I'd like to when I have time. Uh, thanks for the super chat from Patrick, who says, "Is there an A Song of Ice and Fire mystery you don't want solved?" I like that question. That's an interesting question. Yeah, I like that too. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you seen all this kerfuffle about um, House of the Dragon having uh, a Targaryen secret? With re- I mean, this is a very, very light spoiler because it's going to be revealed in the premiere episode. Yeah. Um, on Sunday, but um, so light, 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 light spoiler for House of the Dragon. But apparently, Viserys says that there's this Targaryen prophecy that yeah. the Targaryens are aware of, and the reason why Aegon came to Westeros is because he wanted to stop the White Walkers. And you know, George is involved in this show, so that sounds like, and that's like such a big thing to say that it, like, they probably didn't make that up on their own. Yeah, I think there has been confirmation that it came from George, and George has talked about that idea previously in interviews and stuff. And, and that I think is an example of something that I'd rather not know yeah. personally. Yeah. Um, because there are already lots of hints that like various Targaryens were aware of the prince that was promised as Orai prophecy to oh, stop yeah, the White yeah. Walkers, like but Brendan like Brendan Aemon Rhaegar. And even, like, suspicions about, like, um, Ares the First yep. and... Uh, Jaehaerys the Second, definitely. Yeah, because of the marriage of Ares and yep. Ariella. So, like, yeah, like, it, it already... You can sort of put the puzzle pieces together. <laughs> but making it explicit... Yeah. I don't love. Especially with, like, Aegon, because, like, you know, making the conquest somehow noble... Like, I would rather it be about politics yeah. and power... Like, I don't want it to be okay that Aegon and his sisters burned 100,000 people on the field of fire. Because <laughs> that's oh, not it's, okay. It's for the greater good. That's like, not fuck okay. off. <laughs> he could have just said, <laughs> yo, they're, they're, you, in a couple hundred years, a couple of ice demons are going to try and do something. But don't worry, you'll just stab one of them and <laughs> it's okay. And, like, you would think that if the Targaryens all this time have known about the threat of the White Walkers, like, wouldn't they have, like, done a lot more to support the Night's Watch? I mean, like, they, like, some of them did do stuff to support the Night's Watch, but, like... Like Alysanne. Like Alysanne and the, the castles and the gift, but, like, they could have done a bit more and, like, maybe, like, mentioned the White Walkers. <clears throat> but I, not- I don't want to know about the oily black stone. I don't want that to be solved. I um, want that to just be a... a a really looming hanging thread that's yeah. like oh my god like just k- keep us talking about it until long after the series concludes if it does you don't want george to say oily black ashai was built by the squisher and the squisher's name was <laughs> terence and terence he is terence's <laughs> family tree and he and 20 years later i'll say he was gay and yeah 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 <laughs> do you think george is going to do like a jk rowling and start retroactively trying I to really change i really hope it? not mm-hmm. Um, I, I look, yeah, I, I agree that the oily, because the oily black stone is Lovecraft stuff and like Lovecraft never explained any of his yeah, mysteries, true. you know, because like the point of that, was that, the whole point. <laughs> that particular kind of horror is that it's unknown. And as soon as it becomes known, it's no longer interesting or horrifying. 
So, yeah, I agree with you. Like, like I would like to see more oily black stone. Um, Just, like, around? You walk down the street, <laughs> go to your favorite kebabery, and there's some oily yeah, black yeah. stone. I don't mean in Game of Thrones. I just mean in my personal <laughs> life. I would like more oily black stone. Um, so, I mean, someone in the live chat, you know, points out that, you know, one of the consequences of, like, bringing up uh, the Targaryens knowing about the White Walkers in the show is that, well, hang on. We saw the end of the White Walkers in Game of Thrones Season 8, and that was ended by Arya. The Targaryens barely had anything to do with it. Yeah. So it's like, I, it's a very strange choice for Hot D to like double down on the Targaryen White Walker thing when we saw... We already know. We already know that it's Arya. I am somewhat frightened that they're going to like make that dagger more important than it was. Oh, you can tell that they are doing that because that dagger has appeared it, like multiple times in trailers and promo yeah, but, shots. Like, so we already knew that Valyrian steel can kill White Walkers, but what if it's like only that blade can kill the Night King? I have a <laughs> oh, suspicion God. that that's where they're going. I would, I don't like that because the cat's paw dagger was like in the book yeah. in season seven that Sam found and stuff. So I think that is where they're going, and yeah, I hate it. <laughs> I, I I really don't like it. Oh, well. Uh, yeah, like, now in the live chat says, why is Hot D even talking about others? And I agree. Like, I don't think the White it's Walkers are relevant story. to the Dance of the Dragons. I, I mean, like, I, you know, like, like I mean, what they might be doing is saying, like, oh, you know, because the Targaryens destroyed themselves and all the dragons, tragically, they no longer are prepared to deal with the White Walkers. So it, like, adds a layer of tragedy to the Dance of the Dragons. Which, which I guess is a concept I don't hate, but like if it's still all based around the cat's paw dagger that Arya Stark uses to stab Mr. Frosty Darth Maul, like it just d does not... Like if I had never seen Game of Thrones season 8, then fine, it might work, but I have seen season 8, so unfortunately. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thanks for the super chat from <laughs> Gisk. I'm not going to say which orifice that came out of. Um, <laughs> Giskari says these hours oh, long, <laughs> all of them. These, you, you know, you've got to inhale after you fart, otherwise you'll asphyxiate. True, Gladys. Uh, Giskari says these hours long videos make work better for me. So thank you for that. You think that Old Shift X weirdo would make a Dark Tower video? I, 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 I mean, I don't know about Old Shift X, but I have read the first Dark Tower book. I liked it. Gladys, have you read Dark Tower? No. <laughs> You're an A Stephen King? It. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, good. What, what did you think about it? I really... Uh, uh, I thought you were going to keep doing the moment. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted you to say, good. <laughs> <laughs> but my thoughts on it are a bit, bit more involved than that. <laughs> I really didn't enjoy... The thing that everyone knows about from the end of it. Yeah, there's a, there's a child orgy, isn't there? Uh, I was trying to avoid the words child orgy, but you just had to. Well, we, we, we have a... Um, oh, sorry, a quota for the... Ch there's a child orgy quota as well? Well, you said it twice now, so we're, we're, we've ruined it. <laughs> okay. Continue. <laughs> no, that's really it. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I think. That's it? That's it. I that, feel like... <laughs> that's it. Gladys, I feel like that could have been one word. <laughs> the word should have been... Ew. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, I liked Dark Tower. I, I, f and from what I like, have read about the wider Dark Tower series, like, I like how expansive and trippy and creative and like multi-genre it is. So, like, I, yeah, I would like to read the next, the rest of the Dark Tower series, like, next time I have the time and inclination to do so. But yeah, what? Well, maybe one day. Maybe one day. Uh, we have a we have a new theory theory alert, Gladys. Can you press the th new theory <laughs> button? Oh, the, the alarm. I can't find Did my it? soundboard. The new <laughs> the the uh, the new theory is from Wo Wosef in the super chat says thoughts on Penny is Rick on Stark in drag. Okay, so Penny first appears in the Storm of Swords when she does the joust at Joffrey's wedding. Rick on disappears from the story at the end of A Clash of Kings. Mm. So, <laughs> it really, it, it's obvious when you put it like that. As our mantra on these streams tends to be, if you can't disprove it, it did happen. That is how logic worked. When, when Aristotle <laughs> invented oh, <laughs> logical reasoning in uh, the 1600s, he said that if you can't prove it's wrong, 
It's right. And that's what's actually allowed our society to progress as far as it has. Thanks, Aristotle. Um, Ari. Yeah, so so Rickon left the North with Osha and... <laughs> Are you actually going to do this? I mean, this means... That, Are we actually doing this? I mean, sub-theory, OSHA is gross, right? <laughs> like, OSHA is the other dwarf with Penny. OSHA is a grown woman. Could OSHA be Dantos Hollard? No. Don't say that. But he's there at the start of Clash of Kings. Like, well, you're assuming the timeline is linear. Oh, I'm going to need you to expand your mind here, <laughs> Uh, yeah, look, I, I think I think well, Seth is alright. Yeah. Thanks for the donation from Blaine, who says, Suffering from chronic migraines, but your streams always make it feel better. Thanks, Swifty and Glimbus. Thanks, Blaine. Glad we could help. Guy says, Hey dudes, where on the evil scale do you two go for doing a stream at the same time as my footy team is playing? Just have it on your earbuds while you're on the grounds, my dude. Yeah, everyone's screaming next to you. And you're just listening to, Oh yeah, I guess Recon could be. In drag. Thanks for the donation from Fur. Who's, <laughs> who says, how? That's why they kicked me out of my footy team. <laughs> uh, Fur says, how long do you think they'll stretch out the dance? Uh, well, they said three or four seasons yeah. in Entertainment Hollywood Reporter. I think. I, I think they can do that. I don't think it'll be too bloated if they do that. Yeah, I think that's appropriate. I, I, think, I think that they must be keenly aware of how the pacing was fucked in the Game of Thrones show, and yep. they want to not do that. And, like, you know, they do have a book with an ending to base this on, so I think they will very deliberately be planning this and structuring this. Ooh, you've got a sex robot in chat you might want to murder. I don't know what it is about A Song of Ice and Fire theories that attracts the sex, ro- sex robots. Like, but... as soon as you missin- mention the kid wearing drag. Oh, no. Um... Thanks for the super chat from Saverna, who says, I'm excited for witchy goodness of Alice Rivers in Hot D. Are yeah. you both pumped for the witch queen? Who do you think Alice Rivers is? I think she's um Alice Rivers. Do you think she's Melisandre? I hope not. I think that's kind of lame. <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> that's my fear with, with all these theories. Like, like people joke right, about they're kind, they're gonna try to have Dario. They're going to try to have Jar Jar in the sequels exactly yeah yeah what like like too much fan service like the fucking ed sheeran character like if alice rivers is ed sheeran i will stop watching yeah That's i mean we've limit. made our careers out of these shows and yeah i'm i'm just done if, if that's the case yeah yeah i i will i will give up the fame the glory the bitches <laughs> for for ed sheeran <laughs> i've been meaning to talk to you um that other super chat um in the promotional material, we've seen a lot of different things in the House of the Dragon trailers, right? Yeah, we have. It looks like... There's only 10 episodes. It looks like a lot. It does look like Because, you know, a lot. we've got Daemon's War in the Stepstones. Yeah. Um, you know, it starts with Jaehaerys' death, and then it goes all the way, I think, to Laenor's death. Spoilers. <laughs> I mean, I, I think Jaehaerys' death is like a cameo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we'll... Jump forward a few years. I, I I mean, like, I mean, you know, okay, so, like, mild spoilers. I think this is mild spoilers for Hot Day Season 1. But, like, like we know, like, George has said that it ends at, like, the beginning of the war. And, like, we've seen in trailers right. the Black Council. So, yep, like, yep, yep. we kind of know that it ends at about the time of the Black Council and, like, the beginning of the hostilities. It'll probably basically end with Aegon's crowning. Yeah, which I think would be great. Like, I think that that's I think that's well paced. But um, there's still so much stuff that they've put in there. Like, I thought they were going to completely cut the war for the stepstones if they were doing it like that. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it makes sense for them to do the stepstone stuff because they're worried that if it literally is all people in the Red Keep and Dragonstone talking in rooms, yeah. it's going to lose people. True. And like from the critics, it appears to have done so. <laughs> yeah, like a bunch of reviews have come out and a bunch of people have been like complaining that it's like slow and not much happens. Too many Targaryens. Too many Targaryens. I, I think just secretly they couldn't remember their names and who everyone was. There's no funny dwarf character to laugh at. There's no one telling uh, soup and semen jokes, so L- it's lost them. I mean, that is one of my favourite parts of season one of Game of Thrones. Yeah, it's pretty great. It's pretty great. Um, I made the bold man cry. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah I, I, yeah, I think you're right. I think it's going to be fast-paced. 
Yeah. <laughs> Can you please not make that sense? <laughs> <laughs> Just because just you're a singer and you get to have all that fun with making weird sounds. I wish I could make weird sounds. I, w- I, wish, I always wished I could do like accents and voices and like stuff like that. You can. I, I'm not very good at it and it sometimes sounds offensive. Like I... The trick is to not care. <laughs> are, you doing, are you doing like a caricature of your own voice right now? Yes. <laughs> I love it. I kind of pumped out the Matt Berry for the last video. You know, when I was talking about yes. Colis, like, you noticed that? Yes. <laughs> yeah, can you do a Matt Berry? <clears throat> Fire the nuclear torpedoes. <laughs> Up <a> periscope. <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> yes. What? <laughs> this, is, this is Clem Fandango. Can you hear me? Yes, Clem Fandango, I can hear you. <laughs> Fuck this House of the Dragon shit. <laughs> do, do you want to just do... toast review? <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like no one listening has any fucking idea what. Toast uh, of some London people is. have watched Toast. I I would love to do like Toast of London reviews. I love that show so much. It is it's so stupid. An enormous amount of fun. Yeah, I like it a lot. Have Have you seen Matt Berry's much earlier show called Snuff? with Rich Fulcher, where they are executioners. They play executioners. No, what? Yeah. That's awesome. And the whole joke is that, like, they're doing this grisly task of, like, executing people. And they're just, but they're just like, lovely, talking yeah. the shit over the it's top like of it. It's like an office job. It's like an office job, but yeah. they also have, like, this, like, well-appointed smoking room where they just sort of hobnob with the other executioners. <laughs> and there's occasional, like, time travel, and it's um, it's quite funny. That's awesome. I uh, love him. Yeah. He's great. He's great. I mean, he, he kind the... of always plays the same character, but yeah. it's still always It's a great amazing. character. Yeah. Like, I um, mean, Disenchantment, when he's the pig. I haven't... I, I don't think I got past the first episode of Disenchantment. Well, give it a shot. Yeah, I'd like to. Um, He also did the narration in a Worms game from, like, 2014. You're going to have to unpack a Worms game for me. You know Worms? Like, Worms Armageddon? Oh, okay. Yeah. That sounds incredible. It's it's pretty good. <laughs> what What does he say? Like, like... Oh, I can't remember. I don't remember there being a lot of dialogue in words. No, there really saying. isn't. Which is great. <laughs> Amazing. Anyway, I believe we've hit the uh, tangent quota. All right. Very well. Shall we discuss Duran Martel? Sure, why not? Seems like a normal guy. Yeah, he seems like an uncontroversial... Like, he's really a, a simple character. Yeah, who's... No, no one's given him too much thought. Yeah. Um... So, so what is Doran trying to do? He's trying to get revenge against the Lannisters, but in a slightly more convoluted way than his children are trying to <laughs> get revenge against the be, Lannisters. And if some are to be pieces. believed, it's so much more con- um, convoluted than you could even imagine. Yeah, like yeah, <laughs> yeah, like like everyone disagrees on how the degrees of <laughs> yeah. convolution. Like everyone disagrees on how Doran is doing what he's doing. But but he does make it very clear that his goal is to fuck over the Lannisters because of what they did to his sister Elia and now Oberyn and very soon the Sand Snakes as well, I suspect. Yeah. And Dawn in general. Because I, I feel like a lot of it is, you know, Dawn has never been entirely cool with being a part of the Iron Thrones regime. Yeah. They are a kingdom apart with their own cultures, their own laws, their own inheritance. Prince. Their own uh, prince. Yeah. Um, which, you know, I, I guess you could say that's a justification. Like, like they might have more of a justification for being, like, their own separate independent thing. Like, because of the history. And therefore... But, like, but like you know, like, it, it shouldn't be about revenge. Like, it's like Alaria keeps saying that revenge is just destructive and bullshit. Yeah. And oh, so, she's so cool in the books. She is so cool. I love that speech. Wouldn't it be awesome if... What, what's her name? Indira Vana? Indira, yeah, Indira Vana. Indira Vana. Wouldn't it be awesome if they got Indira, Indira Vana to play the character as written in the book? That'd be crazy. Because <laughs> it's such a good character and they just did a different character. A diff- different character entirely. How did, where did that person come from? Anyway, <laughs> Doran Martel. Doran Martel's a cool dude. I, I, I think that... You know, like, sending his son Quentin on a fool's quest to get eaten by a dragon. What the fuck's that about? And, like, keeping Ariane in the dark and, you know, her just being a loose cannon partly because of his mismanagement of her. 
Like, I, I don't know if that's evil or incompetent, but, like, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> that's why people, you know, come up with these insane theories about what he's really up to, because why would you send your son away so ill-equipped? Yeah. He's the Prince of Dawn, yeah. and he sends him away with, like, two dudes, <laughs> a, <laughs> a ship. Well, I mean, he sends he gives him a bunch of dudes, but they got attacked by pirates. Yeah, true. But like, you know, if he's the prince of send more, more dudes. You have so many dudes. You've got a kingdom. We cannot emphasize <laughs> how many the number dudes. of dudes available to <laughs> Doran Martell. There is an inestimable <laughs> amount of dudes. Is that a word? Inestimable. A myriad dudes. A feast of dudes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I mean, look, I mean, the other thing is that Duran does have a deep and genuine and oft stated concern for the lives of the innocents. He does not want innocent men, women and children burned. So, like, that's good. That does sound pretty good. Like, like the reason he's being so convoluted is because he cares. And, like, I, I think that he ultimately will fail and he ultimately will have a net negative effect on the world. Yeah. But he is trying to do justice with a minimum of bloodshed, which is a, you know, respectable it thing to do, right? sounds noble. Yeah. Is he chaotic or is he lawful? Um, I'm pretty sure the methods by which he tries to accomplish his goals don't tend to, like, give much care to the rule of law. Yeah. I mean, you could say that, like, justice is a principle, but I mean... Oh, totally. Yeah, true. And has he caused injustice? I'm just trying to think of things that we actually know that he's done because I've heard so much stuff about things that he might have done. Yeah. Um, it's hard to separate. I, I, I mean, um, fundamentally, his goal is to make an alliance with Daenerys and put the Targaryens back on the throne and, you know, raise the power and supremacy of Dawn and to displace the Lannisters. So, you know, it's an ambitious, you know, conquering sort of a, you know... But, but he wants to do it in, like, a minimum possible amount of bloodshed. I mean, I guess he wants the overwhelming force from Daenerys in order to, like, displace the Lannisters, get the Targaryens back yeah. without Dawn burning, is what yeah. he wants. Without his people. With, with minimal bloodshed of his people. Yeah, he's not too concerned about... <laughs> yeah, if 100,000 um, Westermen and Reachmen die on the yeah. field of fire, eh. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. He has gout. Well, people with gout are famously uh, <laughs> lawful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, look, I, I, I think that he is lightly evil because, like, like, even though he does have concern for people, he still fundamentally is starting conflict. Yeah that will get innocent people killed and has gotten innocent people killed. And also, like, his mismanagement of his children, like, has not been Like, it's been almost a Jaehaerys the first level of mismanagement. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I think that's a great comparison, because, like, like Jaehaerys, like, he, he does have some, like, good principles. Like, he is thoughtful and he is wise, but, like, he doesn't manage his relationships and his family very well. Um... So, yeah, I mean, I, I think he's lightly evil and, like, lightly chaotic. Lawful right? gout, says Tom in the chat. Lawful gout. Yep. Yeah. We need a gout dimension. Lawful gout. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll put. We'll make a cubic, uh, <laughs> three axes, um, thing. Yeah. I, I. I think next to Aris Okart seems appropriate. Is he there? I put him a bit further down. Yeah. A little bit more evil. Yeah. The thing is, like, Aris Okart, he's, like, he's there, but in, in such a non-intense manner. Whereas Duran Martel is there, and he's really there. Well, I almost want to, like, turn down the opacity <laughs> yeah. on Aris Okart, because yeah. he's such a non-person. <laughs> he fades into the background. <laughs> he's just... Yeah. All right. Um, here's everyone's favorite do-gooder. Good old Q-Burn. Y you know, I'll say this for Kai Burn. He might be the least evil brave companion. <laughs> Might. <laughs> Maybe. And that's like limboing under an eight foot pole. Yeah, he actually might be one of the more evil. Yeah. I C mean, <laughs> the torture. Most of the brave companions just, you know, kill people outright. Whereas Kyburn's more about, you know, the slow, methodical um, Frankenstein. No, Frankenstein wasn't an evil dude. Um, 
you know, the the, the experimentation. He's methodical, he's smart, he's, like, aware of what he's doing. Whereas, like, some of the Brave Companions, like the... What's the Jester's Shagwell? Yeah. And, like, they are clearly mad. Like, they are not... Like, like they're evil, but, like, they, they are so off the wall that it's... I don't think they're... they're co- they are comically evil. They are comic... They are cartoons. Yeah. Whereas, like, Kyburn is, like, a smart scientist who knows exactly what yeah. he's doing. He kind of reminds me of Hannibal Lecter. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Do you think he eats his subjects? I wouldn't put it past him. That's what I would say. I wouldn't put it past him. I, he probably doesn't, but, you know, he definitely could. He has it in him. I think he'd try it. If he puts his mind to it, he could figure it out. He'd try it at least once. Like, if he was he was in his laboratory... You know what? Yeah, this man has tasted human flesh. Look at him! This man has sampled the... Um, the fleshy meat containers of human souls. <laughs> Is that what you call bodies? Time to time. Uh, in a culinary sense, sure. <laughs> when it's on a menu. <laughs> you know how restaurants always like to zhuzh up every dish that they serve? <laughs> Yeah, they don't just say duck, you know, you know. human arm. No, 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 no. That's it, too blasé. Mm. <laughs> it is the dorsal appendage. It is the dorsal befingered appendage. Do you think they tell you the vintage in cannibal restaurants? I think they'd tell you which, like, side of the hill. Oh, wow. That they... Have you seen the movie Antiviral? No. It's the best cannibalism movie I've ever seen. Are there a lot of cannibalism movies that you've seen? No, but it's the best. <laughs> oh. Anyway. Um, Kyburn is a piece of shit because he tortures and experiments on innocent people. Oh, but look at his friendly little grandfatherly little face. I do love that they specify that he, like, seems like a cool dude. Uh, uh, come on, children. It- <laughs> fucking salad fingers. <laughs> <laughs> he is he is a bit salad. I, I mean, I think Kyburn might have created salad. Like salad fingers. Oh my God. Salad fingers came out of Kyburn's laboratory. Canon. Canon. And, and you know, obviously, like I, I want a prequel TV show about how Kyburn ended up in the Brave Companions and what he was like with the Brave Companions and stuff. You know. That sounds super interesting. I think it would just be like, like R18 would not cover what that would be like, so I guess that'll never get made. Yeah. Um, he's got to be one of the most evil, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, and like you know, he serves Cersei, who he is definitely smart enough to realize is terrible. Yep. Is he? I mean, he was with the brave. He was companions, with the brave companions. So he's not lawful. We can't put him in lawful. <laughs> like, there's really no justification. Also, he- like broke rules of the maesters yeah yeah he got um, kicked out yeah no he's he's not lawful I, I mean he is sort of a man of science so there is a sort of a sy- <laughs> systematic methodical nature to him okay like he's not just stabby stabby inject chug the potion he's like yeah he knows what he's doing he knows what he's doing which makes him even more evil yes yeah yeah I, I think he is second most evil on our chart behind Euron I he's think that's so correct. fucked up yeah yeah totally Someone says he's like Mengele in the live chat. Yeah. Um, oh, now this is an interesting one. Oh, this this will be controversial, won't it? Is Gregor Clegane secretly <laughs> a cool dude? <laughs> he feeds the ducklings at the pond. Well, you see, Gregor Clegane saw a prophecy, and he knows he only kills the people who are going to become White Walkers. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. You kind of like. Uh, comparing him to Rhaegar. He knows a prophecy, so it's okay that he did all these things. Well, Gregor Clegane, you know, he, he used to be a normal kid, but then he found amongst his scrolls <laughs> a special book. And young Gregor, he picked it up and said, What doth... <laughs> what doth thou spake on th- my parchment before... No, I can't really do that. Wait, What's what... all this then? What's all this then? <laughs> White Walkers... In my kingdom. And he started killing people. Is Gregor Clegane a, a, a chav? <laughs> um, it's probably rude to say, isn't it? Yeah. you got to respect the chavs in your audience. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I do. I, I've seen the Google Analytics on the topic. Yeah, it tells you how many of them are chavs. <laughs> it's like 70%. <laughs> so I respect the chavs. 
Um, <laughs> someone, someone in the live chat, Wealth Wolf, which incidentally is a great name, That's says amazing. he's eight feet tall and does dope. That's objectively cool. Because he is addicted to <laughs> Milk of the Poppy, yeah. which is opiates, is it? Yeah, it's heroin. Yeah, so, um, you know, like there is a whole thing about how he has headaches, um, and therefore he's fine. No, I mean, he has headaches, and he's kind of stressed out about that. But yeah, he, he kills and, and rapes a lot of people. He is Tywin's mad dog who burns and raids across the Riverlands. Uh, and, he's, and he's terrible. He burned the hound's face. He murdered those children. He murdered those children. Yeah, Rhaenys and Aegon. He's uh he's a real piece of shit. I mean, I I think you maybe could make the argument that like you know, unlike Kyburn, Mountain is not smart. He's not like he doesn't seem like a super like aware, thoughtful dude. And like I feel like that makes him slightly less evil than someone who is very aware about what they're doing. You know. Okay, but- so there's a difference between being aware of you know you performing necromancy <laughs> and being aware of rape being bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I feel like most people are gonna. It, you have to be really fucking dumb to not know that murder is not okay. <laughs> Yeah, cause, yeah, because Gregor doesn't just like follow orders. He does go out of his way to like yeah. assault random people. So, yeah. So is he is he more or less evil than Kyburn? I think the atrocities Kyburn commits are like just on a different level. Kyburn yeah. has zombie Gregor do rapes. Yeah. Wait, does he do it in the book? Not in the book. I'm pretty sure he does. I don't think he does that in the no? book. No? I'm pretty sure in the book, like, Robert Strong has just turned up, and they're like, that's weird. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> Whereas in the show, it's like... Wait, no, Robert Strong's just a new guy. <laughs> He's just a new guy, yeah. Which was uh, a theory posed in one of uh, Gladys's videos on Gladys's YouTube channel that is linked in the description that you all should go subscribe to. Oh, I'm in the description. I think... I hope you are. I think you are. Um, uh, Well, you know, for the record... Like, so it was in season seven, wasn't it, when, like, Cersei captured Scepter Unella and uh, there was a scene where she sent Robert Strong into her room and she started screaming. And a lot of people interpreted that as, like, Robert Strong raped Unella. My my interpretation was just that he was killing her or torturing her. Um, I would it, assume torture. Yeah. It's not specific. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's not in the books. No. But yeah, either way, yeah. Well, I mean, look, I mean, I, I agree that, like, the specific things that Kyburn has done in terms of, like, torturing people over long periods of time, like, that is worse than what Gregor does, but Gregor has done it to a lot more people as yeah, far as we know, right? Yeah, he's had a storied career. Yeah, he's got, like, one of the highest, like, kill counts of innocent people of mm. 81 in the story. But, uh, you know, the thing about Kyburn is that, like, you know, how long was he with the Brave Companions? What was he doing with the Brave yeah. Companions? Like, like Kyburn must have been performing a service for the Brave Companions. I guess he might have just been their medic. But, like, I, I would not be surprised if Kyburn had been experimenting on human beings for years before he appears in the books. Well, yeah, he was kicked out of the Citadel for it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Probably not as evil as Kyburn then, Gregor, but, you know... Near enough to make no matter. Is Kyburn... Uh, is Gregor lawful? Because he follows Lannister orders? I suppose, if you think about it like that. But... But his orders were to cause chaos. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we have to talk about philosophy. Are you fucking kidding? <laughs> Politics in my medieval fantasy? <laughs> uh... Well, this is the whole Jamie dilemma. We went not we went on enough about this last time. Um, yeah. Look, I think that's a decent spot for you it. Know, is it lawful to follow orders from your commander to do terrible things? Yeah. In some sense, yes. In some sense, not yes. <laughs> I, if only there was a word for not yes. <laughs> Uh, quick super chats. Uh, thank you for uh, Musa, who says uh, it's cool that in House of the Dragon, Jason and Tylan Lannister are yeah. played by the same person because they're twins. Yeah, I agree. Uh, That's Jefferson awesome. Hole. Look forward to that. And uh, who Gladys pointed out to me uh, also played Hugh of the Vale in season one. Yeah, cool. Um, uh, they did, um, also Eric and Eric Cargill are being played by twins. That's cool. Not the same dude, but twins. That's cool. Thanks for the oh, su- I'm, I'm not in the description, apparently. Oh, fuck. 
You might have to press reload because I like. Yeah, no, so I, I am. Yeah, just refresh. Yeah, just, if you need to, but you're probably already. You can also just like type glutus. Glu- glutus. Yeah. Type glutus. In into fact, YouTube. if you type glutus, it might work as well. I think if you type glutus into YouTube, you get much. <laughs> I am known by many names. Thanks for the super chat from Kirk Novak, who says, never finished even the second book, never seen the show, but I'm addicted to this content. I love that. I love that energy. I love that a lot. I, I don't know how that works, but I'm glad you're enjoying my it. My brother watches all of my videos and he hasn't read anything. He hasn't seen the show at all. He just watches. He says the videos are good, so who am I to... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, th- I think my grandma just sees it as a way to keep in touch. <laughs> it's very cute. Thanks for the super chat from Mertula, who says, Did Renly ever make Loras bust hands free? See, I can't read Jesus the super Christ. chat before I read it out, so I can't really vet these things, you know. Um, Moving on. Yes. Uh, thanks for the super chat from Cordis, who says, New theory, the concept of honor itself is a horse. Because when... <laughs> <laughs> You made Glider snort. I don't, and I'm not much of a snorter. That has not happened in like 12 hours of live streams that we've done together. Congratulations, Cordus Die. The concept of honor is a horse because Jamie thinks that. Oh, that's fucking brilliant. I mean, if, if honor is a horse, what else is a horse? You know, is justice a horse? Is gender a horse? <laughs> oh, that sounds like a thesis title. <laughs> Thanks for the super chat from Adam. He says, great content. Thanks for the super chat from Fiatra, who says, firstly, I love all your videos and I'm glad to have caught a stream. What do you think of the idea that all seven great houses will go extinct by the end of the series? Mm. I feel like the Starks will stick around in the form of Sansa. Just Sansa? Well, yeah. Yeah, Bran becomes a tree or something. Jon becomes a popsicle of some kind. Yeah. Arya plummets off the face of the earth. Do you think they're going to do Are You Sailing West in the books? It's... Um, so the seed for that was in season six of Game of Thrones when she says that thing to Lady Crane out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, Maybe that, that's something that George told them. It could be. Yeah, no, I, I think that's possible. I mean, didn't he? didn't Paris tell him that he's not allowed to kill Arya? Yeah, that's like the closest he can get to killing ever. That yeah. killer guess. That's what he does. So th- that's why it might be possible. I-, I feel like they sort of already did it with like Alyssa Farman in Fire and Blood True. sailing west. And well, what if that. Arya finds out about that and she's like, oh, yeah, sounds good. What? Like, <laughs> you think Arya will read Fire and Blood? Yeah. She'll watch House of the Dragon on HBO this Sunday, 21st <laughs> August. Um. <laughs> would, it, would it be product placement if George Martin put Fire and Blood in A Song of Ice and Fire? Dude. Um, what if he puts a song of like, ice like and fire? Like Sam stumbles onto it in the yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be kind of. Cause Cause it, it is... But it's very appropriate in world to, for that to happen. So it's not like obtuse product placement. What if he says 20% off now at Random House? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks for the super chat. I think if wild cards appeared. I will be furious. Or Night of the Cooters. <laughs> <laughs> What? Yeah, there's like a the leader of the squishes is called Cooter. Cooter. <laughs> what is this? Some kind of night of the Cooter? Are you saying that the Cooters come at night? <laughs> hey, these th- these cards you have here are looking pretty wild. <laughs> Thanks for the super chat from Robbie, who says, "Imagine House of the Dragon episode one starts in the first line of dialogue." is at least your balls won't freeze off. Yeah, that that honestly oh broke me. Like when like Game of Thrones season 8, it only had 6 episodes to end the story and everyone's like how, you know, they're going to have to be so efficient with their storytelling. Like every line has to be meaningful in this like last like, you know, 300 minutes of Game of Thrones. How are they going to wrap up the story? And then like the the beginning of the final season of the most popular TV show at the time was Tyrion and Varys talking about their balls and lack thereof and it's like oh wow this is this is what we're doing well, sometimes duty is the death of love sometimes balls are the freezing of <laughs> balls yeah that was aristotle i think also aristotle um thanks for the super chat from patrick who says what's the difference between justice and revenge 
Ooh. Gladys, you want to tell them the answer to that question? Um, yeah, it's... Um, it's very simple. It's a clown. It's a clown. It's 12. Um, <laughs> well, I, I, I feel like revenge is like, you know, assaulting someone for your own personal feelings. And justice is following a process that all of society can view and participate in that adheres to norms that are agreed upon by everybody. And it's performed in a more... Does that exist, though? Are there really conventions that are agreed upon by everybody? Well, it's degrees, isn't it? Yeah. There's nothing that everyone agrees so, on. So, I know that uh, Preston Jacobs is someone who opinions are had about, but um, <laughs> <laughs> he, he in his series on The Deeper Dawn, which I believe is a sex move, um, <laughs> he has a little section where he goes into the different like levels, like the, the ways you can view justice. And I think that's actually a pretty good um, uh, breakdown he does <clears throat> of the difference between justice and revenge. Cool. Um, in re- in relation to Doran Martell specifically, and uh, not necessarily something you can apply to the entire world. <laughs> I think, yeah. S- someone in the live chat says justice is a horse and revenge is a pony. And um, I'm uh, very happy about that. Uh, maybe revenge is the friends we made along the way and justice is the Cthulhu-like squid monster that results from the dragon fucking the squid. Yes. I think that justice is a horse and revenge is the guy riding the horse. <laughs> I think that justice is a horse, revenge is the horse's shoes. The horse's cock <laughs> that they got in frame on purpose. What? When When was that? What? Said, um, in No One, uh, Nikolai Kostovoldau actually asked the director, <laughs> whose name escapes me currently, um, you know, there's a scene in The Riverlands where the uh, Sandor and Beric are talking, and the the horse in the background, its dick is just like there. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. And he's like, "Did you do that on purpose?" <laughs> Nikolai sp- N- Nikolai would not get out of his trailer unless. <laughs> Thanks for the super chat from Zane, who says, "Sir Gregor, rid the great people of Westeros of those filthy, dirty, vile, beautiful dragon scum." So we've got a anti Targaryen uh, over here. Um, shall we talk about Sandor Clegane? Yeah, another completely uncontroversial figure. Yeah, um, well, he's kind of nice to Sansa when Joffrey tells him to hit her. Is he nice to Beric Dondarrion? He's not great. <laughs> I mean, look, I mean, Beric Dondarrion captured him. He didn't ask yeah, for that. Yeah, and he was like, let's fight. <laughs> yeah. Which, which was his only recourse to justice at yeah, that time. Yeah, uh, I think, I mean, he killed Micah. He did kill Micah? And he said... Because he was told to. Well, di- what was he told to specifically kill Micah? Um, we don't know that, do we? No, we don't know, but I, I would assume so. It sounds like something Cersei would say. Yeah. Because, but- you know, Micah did, in her eyes, attack the... There. Attack Joffrey. Yeah. I I would not be shocked if... Sandor was ordered to kill him, and that's why he killed him. Yeah. Didn't really want to, but he did it. And well, I don't know about that. He didn't seem to mind doing it. Well, that's the thing. He said that he was, like, into it. Like, oh, I love killing butchers, boys. I do it every weekend. But I think that's Sandor's <laughs> whole thing. Like, he acts like he's into it as, like, a cope, you know? Yeah. Because that's the thing. Like, he's basically a softy, you know, is what we kind of learn. I mean, I mean, look, I mean, I mean, he kills... He's the- a soy boy. He's a real soy boy. He kills a bunch of people, and he does not mind doing it at all. But, like, he's complicated. He's got feelings, Glidus. That's the character. He kills people, but he has feelings. He's complicated. Yeah. George, George loves people who do terrible things, but... Have feelings. Have feelings. <laughs> May, it's all, maybe people all have feelings. It couldn't be. He's not as bad as Gregor. Like, I mean, I mean, what's the worst thing he, that he does? I mean, the worst thing he does is probably killing Micah, right? Yeah, a defenseless, innocent little boy. He, he like, tells Arya that he wished he raped Sansa. But, I mean, that's just, like, trying to provoke Arya into killing him. Yeah. Um. Whereas Gregor, you know, killed a baby. <laughs> and 18 years later, he was like, yeah, do it again! <laughs> <laughs> and I believe he would, yeah. Oh, totally. 
Yeah, I think he's... Um, Shugel in the live chat says he's chaotic evil. Is he chaotic? I, I mean, he mostly is a very obedient hound. I think he has a code. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he leaves the king and he goes rogue. Yeah. But then he... But, you know, he joins a monastery in book four. Yeah. He becomes a monk. I mean, that's a bit lawful, isn't it? Ooh, the sex bots are back. Go away, sex bots. Um, so, I mean, he's somewhere in between lawful and chaotic, I think. Like, yeah, he, he sort of does want to be told what to do. I think there's a word for that. <laughs> I, I, I think he's, like, neutral evil, I think. Yeah, and not even that evil. Like, like compared to Kyburn and Euron. Like, there's a lot of soldiers and knights who kill people who they're told to kill. Yeah, like, Barristan's killed a lot of people, and we put him in good. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I think that he's, like, neutral medieval. Yeah, something like that. Around Melisandre. That's a weird uh, pairing right there. It is. Yeah, I think he's around there, isn't he? Worse yeah. than Tyrion? Um, well, probably, actually. Yeah. 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 Like, 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 Sandor has no pretensions about, like, being, whereas, like, good, you know, like... Yeah. Tyrion which which is sort of by his himself. choice, but, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. What about Brune? The old Broomster. Old Jerome. Old Charlie B. What? You didn't know his first name is Charlie? <laughs> Charlie Bron? George said so in an interview. <laughs> it was on, it was on So Spake Martin, so ah, it must be true. It must be true. <laughs> I submitted a letter that I got from George Martin that said that Bron's name is Charlie. I wrote the letter, but... It said it was from George Martin. said it was from George, so so spoke Martin. Um, Bron's a piece of shit. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Is he, is he lawful? Because he sort of follows gold and follows orders. <sighs> like, he's sort of reliable compared to... Yeah, mostly. Yeah. It's all in service, though, just getting what he can for himself. Um, I, I think where this is made most stark is where he tells Tyrion that, like, I would kill a baby for enough money. Yeah. Um, but what's... So that's his words. Like, what's the worst thing that Bronn does? Um, the Stokeworth thing is kind of fucked up. Oh, uh, yeah. He, like, kills uh, Birch... What's his name? Birchman? Fucking Terence Birch? Yeah. Um, Tree Sp Spriggan? Bill Pot Plant, Bill Pete? Murray. Bill, it was Bill Murray, wasn't it? Wouldn't it be great if Bill Murray Garfield played that guy in <laughs> Game of Thrones season five? Yeah, no, he's he's a bad dude, and, and and I mean, like, I I like his honesty about it. Like, I like that he's saying that like this is just the world that I exist in, and this is how you get ahead, and I want to get ahead, so this is what I'm doing. But it's yeah. like he's a bad guy. But then you have people like Brienne who are like, this is the world we live in, and I'm better than that. Yep. And that, and that's the entire point why George has bad people is yeah. to make the good people like it, it. It shows how good the good people are. You know, yeah, putting him next to I'd make him more lawful than Sandor. Yeah, is he as lawful as Victorian? No, no, <laughs> no, he's not. No, that there's good. Is he? Is he more evil than Melisandre? Melisandre burns people alive. Maybe we should make Melisandre more evil. Yeah, I think we should do that. Yeah. But, I'm, but, so I, but when I was wants... putting this together, I, I was fearful of making people overlap. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> is why if we have people... They're not going to tessellate, Gliders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't Jenga. Um, before we get into the Baratheons, I need to uh, make usage of facilities. Because as we've been over, you know, um, theory time, my bladder's too small. Do I have diabetes? A, a Song of Ice and Fire theories. Well, well, all right. We'll we'll hold a uh, Gladys bladder um, theory session, and we'll get to the bottom of it. Any doctors in the live chat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no worries. Uh, I'll do some super chats. Uh, thanks, Musa. Uh, we have added Gladys to the description. Thank you for the super chat from Wealth Wolf, who says, "Would you guys consider adding Patchface to this? Such an ambiguously creepy character." I, I agree, but like Patchface doesn't really do anything at any point. 
Like, he's just kind of there and says creepy shit. So he's pretty hard to... It's hard to rank someone who doesn't do things. Uh, but I, I love Patchface. Patchface is such a cool character. And that other YouTuber, uh, a YouTuber called... Uh, what's her name? Oh, oh, yeah, there's a YouTuber called uh, Alt Shift X uh, who did a video about Patchface that I quite liked. Uh, thanks for the super chat from Stannis McNuff. Great name. Who says, walking through the hardware store, listening to you guys, and even seeing a cute puppy. Can this day become any better? Also, Swifty equals puppy confirmed. How did you know? I have no thumbs. I cannot tweet. Um, thank you for the super chat from Geschlempft Mottenbuffke. Geschlempft Mottenbuffke. Who says, the hound is based and Glimbus is papa. You're not wrong. Thanks for the super chat from Furzapata, who says Sandor has layers like an onion. Sandor is Shrek. He's He's got like an ogre patois about him, for sure. Uh, thanks for the super chat from Woasef, who says you want a lawful girl, but you need the chaotic cat emoji. All right. Um, Gladys, I'm so glad you're back, because now we are discussing Robert Baratheon. Me. It's uh, it's it it's it's the Bobster. It's the big Bob. He uh, you know, he killed that dragon dickhead Rhaegar, <laughs> as he is attested in the histories. He brought down the Mad King, mm-hmm. the tyrant, yeah, the monstrous evil mm-hmm. tyrant. He raped Ares. Cersei. He raped Cersei. Yeah, he raped Cersei. Um, he hit her. He hit Cersei. And he committed the worst sin of all ever depicted in any of these books. Adultery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. With Bessie. Um, and, and he had very little interest in governing the realm that he took over. Is that really a moral failing, though? Like, it's just a job and he wasn't built for it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like to be fair, he had John Aaron running the show yeah, a lot of the time. And it was pretty wise of him to um not step on John's toes in that regard. Yeah, like you know, let the smart dude take care of everything. Yeah, like that's better than trying to run things badly himself. Um, so is he? Is, I mean, look, he's he's a shit dad. <laughs> he's a shit dad to Joffrey. Yeah, that's bad. He um. He doesn't really do much that's good for anyone. True. I mean, after he overthrew the tyrannical rule. He, he did Aaron's. do that. But, like, there's a certain amount of self-serving, Ooh, like, yeah. glory and, and personal like, would power. Would he have done that if he hadn't felt slighted by the whole Lyanna thing? Yeah. And, and Ares, did Ares demand Robert's head? Or just Rickard and john aaron's heads whose heads did eris request well, he wants again? so many heads that guy's obsessed yeah he wanted with everyone's heads. heads my point like R- robert i mean they had to go to war against Ares. robert was just good at it <laughs> yeah like is he more heroic than ned and like all the other thousands oh, God, no. of soldiers Absolutely who went not. marching no 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 no. he was just really good at it he doesn't want to cause suffering to others no no absolutely not he, he, he at least wants to think of himself as a good guy yeah. He's not like Sandor where he's like, ah, being bad is just the way it is. Yeah. He wants to give it up. He wants to give it all up. He wants to go across the narrow sea and sell his sword and be just a hero fighting, you know, killing dudes, having a grand old time. It It is bad that, like, so much of his identity he has built around violence. <laughs> It's all he knows. It's all he understands. And I think that that's a wonderful little critique of, oh, no, I'm going to say the words. Oh, no. Uh, toxic masculinity. Ah, our quota is zero for that, friends. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm cunt. The, 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 the thing that's great is the impotence of Robert Baratheon. Like, he is the very image of, like, the male standard of, like, this is the best that a man can be. Yeah. But in so many ways, he fails to rule he fails to reproduce he fails to have any meaningful relationship. i don't know if he fails to reproduce he has 16 bastards <laughs> yes okay that's true but he doesn't have a true born son yeah. which is the one that matters in this world socially um so yeah he is the ultimate success and the ultimate failure yeah. at the same time what do you think of him as a friend i mean 
I mean, w- was he was he sending ravens to Ned like every other week? Dear Ned. Dear Ed, I cheated on my wife this weekend, and I <laughs> killed three gazelles in the Kingswood. Gazelle what did you do today? Having a tough run tonight. Well, we've got to hit the quota. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, probably, like, he hasn't seen Ned in, how long is it? Ten years? No, eight, uh, since the Greyjoy Rebellion. Um, and, you know, that's like, they both have jobs to do, so. Yeah. I... Yeah. Do you think do you think Robert was a bit depressed after the death of John Aaron? Oh, totally. Cuz like we, we I mean we saw him I think he may have been in like a particularly bad place when we saw him. Like he might have been a bit better. You know what's really interesting to me is that we never hear about how Tyrion and Robert got on because you yeah. you, you know Tyrion, you know Robert, you just pictured them getting along. Yeah. Have, like, cuz Tyrion, I mean he's basically just a funny dwarf dude, Robert absolutely would have loved that. He, he yeah. loves drinking, he loves whoring, they have so many interests in common. They hate Cersei. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, there, there is a certain amount of ambiguity in the timeline about how much time Tyrion spent at yeah. King's Landing versus Castle Rock before the story started. Um, but I, I think it's also possible that Robert may have not liked Tyrion because he was a Lannister. True. And Robert does complain about being infested by Lannisters. Yeah. Um, I mean, to be fair, Lancel is a pretty stupid name. <laughs> and he never did he get never that did breastplate get... stretcher. Robert died, still wondering his if breastplate, that breastplate would ever be stretched. <laughs> um, what a crime! Yeah. I mean, who's is his closest friend? Like Thoros of Mir. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> like Thoros does not like say great things about Robert or anything. Yeah. But they like drinking. I I think that he's, like, lightly evil. Yeah. Because, like, he he should have not raped Cersei. That was pretty not cool of him. He should have not... Did, Did he hit Joffrey in the books? I believe so. Yeah, yeah, when he cut the cat open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He should not have beat his child and been a terrible dad. He should not have mismanaged the realm. I mean, again, like, we don't sort of know what it was like when John Aaron was around, but um, I think he's very, very lightly... Ev- like, like, look, he did displace the Mad King. He was heroic. Like, I don't know how much of that was really, like, for the good of the realm and how much that was just, I like doing this because I'm good at it and it gets me validation and attention and glory, but I think very, very light and evil. Uh, is he lawful? I, I I mean, yeah, he's an adulterer. <laughs> he he has a sort of a chaotic energy. I mean, he's an usurper. Yeah, true. I don't, I don't think he's lawful, but he's not, like, super chaotic. I think he's, like, yeah. very, very, very light chaotic evil. Yeah. He's like Euron if you put Euron through the dryer a bunch of times. <laughs> that is that is an incredibly harsh insult. <laughs> You're like the worst person who ever lived, but like, like way less. more boring. <laughs> yeah. Inter- really interesting to put him next to Duran Martel, because they're so different. They're but so like different. morally similar, isn't that interesting? Yeah. Mm. This'll be fun. Stannis, <laughs> oh man, yeah, Stannis. A lot of people have very strong opinions about Stannis. I mean, here's the interesting thing: people who watch the Game of Thrones TV show do not have strong opinions about Stannis. The sorts of people who read the Game of Thrones books and post about the Game of Thrones books are the kinds of people who have strong opinions about Stannis. Stannis. Is the person to have strong opinions about? It would seem like it's just in vogue to think a lot about Stannis Baratheon. Yeah, and that. Bold head of his. So bold. So heady. Um, He's lawful but flexible, right? Yeah. Um, Like, he has this sort of iron thing about, I am the rightful heir, I'm doing what's just, everyone must obey me, but he also is willing to work with people like Davos and he's willing to go and save the Night's Watch and he's willing to work with with, uh, Night's Watchmen and... 
He's he's willing to compromise. So like he is he medium lawful or like mild lawful, medium lawful. Yeah, I really like the idea that you know, um there's this idea that Stannis will bend uh break before he bends. Mm. That's what um Donald says, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um Donald Noy. And it's it's simply not true. Yeah. Because if he would break before he bends, Davos wouldn't be alive. He wouldn't have come to the Night's Watch. He wouldn't yep. be compromising with wildlings. Yep. Like, it's just untrue. Yep. And also, like, taking Melisandre, <laughs> who is, a like, a religious extremist from another continent, and he's like, yes, you will be my chief advisor, <laughs> and I will bone you to birth a magic shadow. Like, does that sound lawful to you? Would Brienne do that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it looked like Renly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, he, you know, the the fact that he went to save the Night's Watch, the fact that he's concerned about the White Walkers, not just politics. It, he's he is... actually remarkably good for someone in his position. Yes. Although he did have Branley and Courtney Penrose murdered. Yeah. I'm starting to think that this exact system is almost like why George Martin wrote these books. Yeah. Is to make the most morally complicated. Yeah. That's the thing, right? Is that we're talking? <laughs> yeah, no, this is dumb. Um, <laughs> we we're trying to grade people on morality in a series that's been built from the ground up to. It is like aggressively <laughs> designed to break. We have these chosen systems. the framework worst suited to discussing this series. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> Yeah, don't you love the conclusion of, like, a very long live stream series that ends with, but this whole thing was moot because... <laughs> I Look, Stannis also allows Melisandre to burn people alive. Mm-hmm. That's bad. Not good. <laughs> um, he... He executes the cannibals in his camp in Book 5. I'd say that's a pretty morally neutral action. Yeah, that's true. They are he, cannibals. He tortures Theon in Book 5. That's not very nice. Is it really torture he does to Theon? He, like, hangs him from the wall. You know how painful that is? He's just... <laughs> <laughs> getting those delts worked. Gotta do dips all day. Yeah. Um, I don't know. He could be worse to think. Like, uh, sorry, it's just like when you've come from what Theon has been through up until that point, it's like, oh, Theon's on break. <laughs> <laughs> he's having a tropical vacation yeah being chained to a wall is like the best thing that's happened to Theon <laughs> in like three books because like he's he's never like fuck you Stannis how dare you chain me up to this wall he's like yeah, yeah we can talk <laughs> yeah <laughs> honestly the tone of that chapter is low-key hilarious <laughs> Because Theon is, like, being taught... And Stannis is kind of confused <laughs> that this lunatic is just, like, chatting with him. And <laughs> Theon's like, hey, I'm on a tower. Let's fucking kill the phrase. I'm out of... Thanks for hanging Ra- me from the wall, by the way. Ramsay's gonna kill you all. But, yeah, this is real cosy, by the way. What is this? Granite? Ooh, it's nice <laughs> on my back. Ooh. A little to the left. <laughs> He's loving it. I think Stannis is lawful neutral. Lawful neutral, yeah. yeah. How's it hanging? <laughs> nice. <laughs> Says sixth true magician. Um, Did I miss out on any fun super chats, by the way? Uh, there was a bad pussy joke. Oh, I like that. Uh, there's a super <laughs> chat from Robbie who says, would Robert have killed Cersei's kids if he found out? I think probably. I think probably. Yeah. I mean, that's what that's entirely what Ned's reasoning was. Yeah. But the other question is, like, did Robert already kind of know deep down? Um, Robert strikes me as someone who was in denial about a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I think on some level, he, he knew. Put Stannis further to the left. Yeah. <laughs> well, again, like, you know, he banged the fire witch. I mean... And went on a northern holiday. Tropical escape to the wall. Come to sunny Eastwatch. It's by the sea. (laughs) (laughs) It's in the name. It's on the brochure. Uh, Renly. The best Baratheon, right? Oh, is is that so? (laughs) Yeah, he's, he's the best one. No one dislikes Renly Baratheon. 
got nice green armor. He's very handsome. He's what more do you want? Very sexy, yeah. You know about the theory that says that um, Renly is Robert's bastard? Yeah, I, I kind of like it. I mean, it's yeah. stupid, but I kind of like it. Yeah. I mean, how, how, what, I mean, what is the age gap there? Um, well, Renly's like 19, isn't he? No, he's not. In the book? No. He's a young dude. He's not old. According he to was the 21. Wiki, he's 20 in A Game of Thrones. He was born in 277, so he was like 30... No, 23. It's 21. Wit. Yeah. Oh, I may have mathed wrong there. <laughs> I may have dipped when I should have dodged. And Robert would have been... I don't know, if you just go to the Robert page, it'll tell you when he was born, and you can... How great is... So, Robert was 15 when Renly was born. Yeah, I Entirely would not, possible. I would not put it past Robert. Yeah. And they pass it off as, um... Stefan's bath, uh, son. I feel like if it was true, Robert, like, might have, like... Cared a bit more about Renly? Yeah. yeah. Or, or even just, like, you know, shit-talked him more. You yeah. know? Taking the piss more. <laughs> I feel like it would have rubbed it in Renly's face. Maybe you know? that's why um he didn't do anything about Jamie having fathered his sons. Because it's like, ah, well, I did that. I maybe. can't talk. <laughs> yeah, Robert is a real sort of boys will be boys. Yeah. Ah, well, your father's some bastards on another man's wife. Whatever. <laughs> it's an average <laughs> We've Saturday all night. There. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, Renly's bad, isn't he? Because yeah, he's not very cool. It's just sort of mostly for his own ego. He decides to break the laws of inheritance and go against everything and start a war for his own empowerment and his boyfriend's Renly family's being empowerment. King and... is really dumb. Yeah, it's not good. It's a pretty dumb idea. It's sort of like a. It's like a coup. It's sort of like a power grab that is not really motivated by anything good. Yeah. Like I, I mean, like you know, I mean, he sort of he he argues that he would be a better king than Stannis. Um, what is his? Why does he think that? Because I'm popular. Oh my god, <laughs> that's sort of it. I, I think that if re- wasn't like, Baylor also extremely popular, the blessed Baylor, the blessed uh, great king yeah. Baylor. Yeah, yeah. Well, no bad person has ever won the popular vote. True. Um, I think that Renly is bad. I, I mean, I, I think you could maybe make the argument that Renly is such a dumb himbo that he doesn't actually even... <laughs> we should probably talk about him in the same way we talk about Marcella. Like, he yeah, just yeah, isn't yeah, a mo- yeah, yeah. He's just so dumb, he doesn't... <laughs> Marcella is canonically smarter than Renly. True. Like, there is no way Renly could beat Tristane at Savas. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. He couldn't beat a pigeon. So, But he's so handsome. <laughs> it's hard to say he's bad when you're looking yeah, at him like that, that, you know? Um... Yeah, I, I, I think that he's lightly evil. Like, it, it's hard to make him, like, very evil because we never see him actually do yeah. anything to anyone. Like, I mean, politically, he, you know. But also, like, he was sort of being manipulated by the Tyrells. Yeah. I mean, he was complicit, but, like, he went along with what they were doing. I think and... if he was, like, truly evil... You know, when he's like, Ned... um we can do a coup and you should make me king. Yeah. And Ned was like, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Renly just left. He just fucks off. Yeah. He, like, in, if he was like mega evil, he would have done something to Ned. I, well, yeah, well, well, I think if he thought he could get away with it, he might have. Yeah. Yeah, but Ned's like the only person who really could have... Helped him. So when he... Yeah, so he just fucked off. You should have gone to Janos Slint. <laughs> Got the gold cloaks on your side. No one can stop you. Uh-huh. That's what Ned thought. Yeah, we look, we, we never really see him do anything. But he he disrupts the realm and plots and schemes. And he, he's, he's lightly lawful... lawful law, law, uh, evil, chaotic. Chaotic evil, right? Yeah. Brienne thinks he's a cool dude. <laughs> so he must be. <laughs> Yeah. Um, After Effects is having a really hard time with this. Yeah, I wonder if it's because there's a billion images lo- loaded. Do you think maybe After Effects was not designed <laughs> to make uh, graphics like this? Well, how? Well, hang on. Let's not. Let's not be crazy. Let's not be silly. Is he? What? He's? Is he? I mean, I, I guess he's comparable to Duran in a lot of ways. He's like dumb but Duran. Way stupider. Yeah. yeah. He's like. Yeah. Okay. 
you want to talk about Jorah? I'd love to talk about Jorah Mormont. The bear, the bear. Actually, yeah, yeah, Jorah and Daenerys are the bear and the maiden fair. A lot of couplings in the series are the bear and the maiden fair. Yeah, I guess like Sandor and Sansa are like the bear and the maiden fair. Indeed. I think George... And uh, Brienne and that bear. <laughs> you know, you might be right. It's uh, it's always interesting when a man writes a bunch of relationships about like a ugly man with a hot girl. Hmm. What did George mean by this? <laughs> <laughs> what what experiences might George possibly be channeling? What fantasies might George possibly be channeling? You know, he, so the character he said that is most like himself is Sam. Mm. And Sam, um, I mean, is Gilly Gilly's hot? But not like... Is Gilly hot? I think... Oh, how is she described in the books? She she is an incest wildling daughter of Craster. Say no more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't remember how she's described, but I don't, I don't think she's described as being attractive. It says in the text, and... <laughs> it just says, yeah, she was like mega hot, yo. <laughs> Bro, you won't believe... I I mean, look, I mean, even so, Gilly was probably the most attractive woman for about 250 miles in any direction. Okay, that's, yeah. When she was at the wall. Um, But Jorah sold slaves to buy jewellery for his wife. I don't think George ever did that. Or if he did, he's been very good at hiding it. Look, I don't know what went down with Lisa Tuttle. But, um, <laughs> but Jorah um, hits on a 13-year-old She's girl. She's literally a minor and neurodivergent, so, yeah. Is Daenerys neurodivergent? Probably not, no. <laughs> okay. Um, Is that a meme? Yeah. So, yeah, not very cool of him to do that. <laughs> In his defense, though, she does kind of look like his old wife. <laughs> That's what he says, at least. Your Honor. <laughs> Your Honor. She... Yeah. Um, yeah, I think he's bad. Uh, I mean, he, he's very loyal and, like, self-sacrificing. Um, in in a way that, like, like, it is partly about trying to bone Daenerys, but, like, it's got to be a little bit more than that. Like, I think on some yeah. level he's trying to redeem himself and trying to do something good. So he received a pardon from the Iron Throne yeah. for his services of spying on a teenage girl. Yeah. Um, so that's lying to her, firstly, by the way. Um, but then when he could return home, he chooses to stay with her. If it was, like, just because she's really hot for a teenage girl, yeah. um, I don't know if he'd do that. I think it, it is more... It is deeper than just she's hot. Yeah. <laughs> I think because you're right. especially um after a game of thrones like apparently the birth of dragons reshapes Jorah it's like he witnessed something truly magical and like now there's nothing else he believes in it's just Daenerys is magical and I have to help her well that's what he says in the show yeah in the book there's no such dialogue True. we don't get as much insight into what's really going on with Jorah they're very the different characters yeah because, of course, in the show, he's played by Ian Glenn, who's very handsome and charismatic. He's whereas so in the book, nice. he's just sort of this balding, old, gross dude who hits on children. <laughs> so he, so I, I feel like he's on the evil side. Yeah. Like, slightly. Like, like, I think his service to Daenerys is good. But I think his motivations are far from pure. Oh, I was just trying to gauge him on the yeah. lawful chaotic axis. I mean, his law... Well, right, yeah. He's he, definitely not good. Yeah, he's definitely not good. I mean, I, I think that he's probably, like, with regard to lawful chaotic, like, he probably started more chaotic, what with the slaving, and then <laughs> became more lawful, what with the total loyalty to Daenerys. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to make him lawful evil. Yep. Slightly lawful evil. Who's next? It would appear that... Tywin Lannister is next. I mean, he's an upstanding citizen, isn't he? Oh, yeah, he's never done anything to besmirch anyone. I think that his parenting style is really innovative. Yeah. Almost as good as um, Jaehaerys. 
Yeah, I, I think Tywin is one of the worst in the series because he orders a campaign of killing innocent people in the Riverlands, and he has his Tyrion's wife raped, gang raped in front of him. Yep, and he is generally ruthless and murderous. He killed all the Reigns and Castamirs. Like, he performed, like, genocide on, like, a whole... flooded their castle? Yeah. What the fuck? So every man, what is woman, wrong with and this guy? child... Yeah. Holy shit. When you actually think about that... Yeah. <laughs> like, pictures that happening in the real world. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's pretty metal, honestly. <laughs> like, 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 redirecting a river to drown... An entire like town of people. What the fuck? And the incredible thing is that he's managed to fucking like gaslight the kingdoms into thinking he's a cool dude. And like this is like which I mean I mean you you said toxic masculinity before and that like he kind of is that because he is We are so over quota now. We are far beyond quota. I'm gonna get a letter from the Ombudsman. Um he he is the demonstration of why the moral system in Westeros is fucked. Because any system that allows you to do the things that he did and still call yourself a, a, a the respectable most powerful lord, man of the kingdom as well. Yeah. It it demonstrates that the system is fucked. Yep. So he so he's one of the most evil for sure. Is he more lawful or is he more chaotic? Um so we kind of talked about this with Joffrey. It's like he is the law. Yeah. Um. So we kind of have to think about his personal code because his relationship with the law, as a you know societal construct, is like well he owns it. Um. So of course he's gonna follow it where he can because he can. It's up to him whether what he does is okay or not. So I don't know. Do you think that he has a set of principles that he adheres to strictly? Lannisters first. You sure about that? I think it's Tywin first. Yeah. I mean, what is he really driven by deep down? Like, I, I, it's about his father, Tywin. Resentment for his father. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's really, really insecure because his father was mocked and he felt like his honor and dignity was slighted. And he wants to feel like a big, tough man by acting like a big, tough, violent man and silencing everybody yeah. who questions him. And repressing the parts of himself that resemble his father. Yeah, and that's why he hates Tyrion, because Tyrion embodies all of the weaknesses and all of the ignobilities that he um, hates directed at himself. He's, um, he's shit. What uh, a loser. What a lame I think that the chaotic angle is that he slept with his son's girlfriend, Shay, and possibly built a secret tunnel to a brothel so that he could... <laughs> Visit the ladies of the night do on I the have regular. To do it? I'm gonna do it again. You ready? <laughs> you have to do it. Secret tunnel <laughs> through the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to bring up uh, the tunnel more often. People fall asleep to our streams. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's like 70 people who just woke up. Like, and what, what the, the fuck? fuck? An avatar reference. <laughs> I wasn't built for this. <laughs> um, so I so uh, uh, neutral evil. Yeah, he's just evil. Like I don't think he much cares about law or chaos. He just cares. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what happens when you like become the law. It doesn't matter. So you just yeah. do what you want to do, and that really reveals. Like when you have that ultimate power, it really does reveal whether you are good or evil. That's basically it. Yeah. Well, I mean, unless you, like, abstain like Robert did. Yeah. He became the law and then was like, mm, no. <laughs> nah. Is he more evil than Kyburn? I think he's more evil than Kyburn. Yeah, the gang rape really does it for me. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. And just the scale. Like, the number of people who Tywin has had killed. And he has to be more evil than Gregor because everything Gregor did was because Tywin told him to... Well, not everything, but... Yeah, I think Gregor he's... would be nothing without Tywin. Yeah, yeah, I I think Tywin's capacity for evil is is larger than Gregor's because Tywin's evil extends beyond the reach of his sword. Yeah, 
He has institutional evil at his yes. hands. Yeah. Cool dude. Real piece of shit. Uh, Alistair says, which look do you prefer for Tywin? The show or the books? Charles Dance is so handsome. Yeah, I, I can't think about Tywin without seeing Charles Dance. I completely get the book thing. You know, the mutton chops. Um, yeah. I I think Charles Dance killed it. Yeah, he did. Just his performance, like, Man, and I don't, I don't care that much about the modern chops. I said it before, and I'll say it again. The person who did the best job on Game of Thrones is the casting director, Nina Gold. She yeah. fucking nailed it. Yeah, I think she did. What do you think of the casting in House of the Dragon so far? I seen? I'm still having a bit of trouble with Doctor Who. <laughs> I. Waiting for Damon Targaryen to whip out his sonic screwdriver. Exactly instead right. Of Dark Sister. I, I keep seeing that Matt Smith line where he says, fish fingers and custard. <laughs> and it's, a fez is a cool to wear a fez. And now he's supposed to be this dark, dangerous. I just, I just don't want to see the Doctor fuck, really. You know, that's just like, not, I don't, I'm not into it's that. It's not what I need. Although, if you've seen the thick of it, um, that's um, Peter Capaldi. Um, s- Swearing his fucking lid off that every great. episode. It's so good. It sounds fantastic. I, I like the look of... I'm, I mean, w- one of the really impressive things about the Hot D casting is Rhaenyra and Alison, the young actors Ooh, yeah. and the old Millie actors. Millie Alcock and um, Emma Darcy, look, they, it yes. looks like they just aged Millie Alcock up. Yes. Honestly, like at a glance, <laughs> sometimes I can't tell like at a glance whether it's young or adult yeah. Rhaenyra. That's how similar they look. So. And um, Olivia Cook and what's young um young Allison. uh yeah i don't remember right now yeah no it's super good yeah uh i think otto hightower looks yeah reese what's his name reese Irfan or yeah. something patty considine Kristen cole looks appropriately oh, so hot yeah <laughs> oh my God. I, the, the weird the, the weird thing about Kristen cole like if if there's one character who it makes sense to make black in house of the dragon it it's Kristen been, cole yeah, because true. like he's from the dornish marshes emily carey and, thank you and and he also like he's not a um son of a lord he's he's son of a steward and like like yeah common origins he could have come from anywhere it it would make sense for Kristen Cole to be black but um but in terms of his handsomeness uh sure <laughs> um so yeah I like the casting in House of the Dragon except for Matt Smith kind of yeah we'll I, see what happens I I, I don't want to see Damon whip out his sonic screwdriver <laughs> um. In any sense of the word. Okay. I ha- yeah, I have more trouble with the Morbius gif than <laughs> with him being the Doctor. See, I haven't seen... Is that the one where he has his shirt off and he's yeah, dancing around? Yeah. yeah. I-, I haven't seen Morbius, so I, I haven't ha- been poisoned in that particular well, You'll respect. need to do some research before as the dragon starts. We need to... <laughs> I, <laughs> it's Morbin time. I I should get on Morbin time for sure. <laughs> what? It- it's like a vampire superhero oh, thing? D- who fucking cares? Is it Marvel? <laughs> is it... it- I think I really have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Um, do you want to do a couple more? Yes. What would you like to do? Um, well, Roger Carlaw is kind of like a sore thumb there. <laughs> he really stands out, doesn't he? In a sea of secondary characters, he is a quaternary character. Yeah, perhaps even pentanary. <laughs> Penitentiary? Pen- Ooh. Octernary? Um, Roderick Harlow is the lord of Harlow, Harlow in the Iron Islands. Imagine that. Imagine having your own castle named after you. I, he is the... Island as well. He's the brother. Well, I don't think it was named after him specifically. I think it was like... <laughs> this, a, you can't disprove it. <laughs> is he the brother of Alanis Harlow, the mother of Theon and Asher? Yes. Uh, and he likes books. I love books. And he dislikes Euron. What else do we know about him? Favorite um, color, <laughs> likes long walks on the beach. Um, I don't know. I just wanted to talk about Roderick Carlo. I think he's cool. I, I think, think it's he's... cool that there's um an Ironborn Lord who's like obsessed with being learned. Yeah, I, I think he's a great like reminder that these cultures are not monolithic. Oh like, yeah, Iron Islanders are not all the same. They're not all murderous. They're not Vikings. all Victorian. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, wh- like, there's bits in the books. Like, w- was it Ares who said, 
oh, we should have killed all of the Ironborn in the Grey Joy Rebellion. We should have made... No, Cersei said it. We should have turned the right, islands yeah. into like just a pile of their skulls. Like We should have just genocided the Ironborn. And uh, Roderick is a nice, uh, you know, handy little reminder that maybe genocide... <laughs> that particular justification for genocide, <laughs> saying that, oh, they're all the same, is always wrong because there's always exceptions and there's always outliers and there's always change makers and there's always Rodericks. Yeah, cultures are um, transitory. They're evolving things. They're not set in stone. Yeah, which is what's so cool about the Ironborn plotline is that like it's sort of about yeah, this it's about culture. the direction of the culture. Yeah, because the king of the Iron Islands, he's not just like a political. He's like a cultural and religious leader as well. He leads these people. It's like what his job is, and deciding who's going to succeed Balon fundamentally changes what's going to happen to the Ironborn going forward. Yeah, it's such a big topic for George to be grappling with in this fantasy does, series. I think he does it pretty well. I think he does. I think he does. And, and I think part of why it's good is because it's mostly subtextual. Yeah. He yeah, doesn't yeah. try and shove it in your face. It just sort of happens. Well, yeah, because it's, it's, it's baked into the plot with Balon's death and um, Aaron calling for the Kingsmit. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think Roderick is obviously a good guy. I mean, like, we know very little about yeah, him, Yeah, he appears really. in, like, two chapters. Yeah, and he doesn't really do much apart from, like, support Asher. Yeah, and tell her to read books. <laughs> and we can't really be sure, like, how much of it is, like, genuine concern for others and how much of it is, like, his ambition as a lord. Like, that's the thing. Like, you don't stay a lord without being a bit of a dick, <laughs> I think. <laughs> that's kind of what we learn from Game of Thrones. Yeah, so. is that the whole system is... You, you kind of have to be a dick to perpetuate it. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder uh, if there's anything like that in our world. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I no, hate I, that when George got all political. <laughs> Gladys, anyone who has power is definitionally a good guy. True. Anyone, Why else would they have power? Anyone who's rich. They wouldn't be rich if they weren't a good person. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think that he's light, uh, chaotic good. Yeah. I think that he's chaotic because he... Is a nonconformist and yeah, sort of, he's a change maker. And he resists, like, 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 so many of the Ironborn just go along with Euron because that's the way the tide's going. Whereas Roderick stands against what everyone else is doing. In fact, because he's kind of set in his ways, like that, you know, he has a maester and he's committed to being knowledgeable and you know knowing things. That's kind of like I, I don't know. I feel like the willingness to go along with whatever's going on is kind of chaotic. And, yeah. and his standing against that is lawful. Because life is chaos. And aligning with the chaos of life is more chaotic than uh, trying to stop entropy by adhering to institutions and rules. Me when. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, the next one's... Oh, oh no. Oh, are we talking to Littlefinger? Oh, dearie me. All right, I think Littlefinger's the finale. Okay. Because Littlefinger's the whole fucking bucket of yeah, worms. We'll be here for 40 minutes. <laughs> Is there enough room in the evil quadrant, Gladys? <laughs> we can just replace the background with his face. <laughs> he just is the entire evil yeah. quadrant. God, he's so evil. How good is that artwork it's by so Sardag? I love it. He looks like such a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so, I mean, who's Littlefinger, Gladys? He's just a little guy. <laughs> uh, is it true that his fingers are unusually small? Um, John Oliver once alleged that they were. However, I don't believe it's actually true. Did John Oliver say that? No, it's a... a let's meme? not get into it. I think your meme knowledge is so much deeper than mine. Okay, so if you want the context for that, there's... Um, I think it was Donald Trump alleged that they asked him to go on their show last week tonight. And then he said that he didn't want to... And that... They once said that he had small fingers. <laughs> small hands, yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know where that came from. What an interesting character. Where does he go on the... Um... No, let's not. <laughs> let's, let's not. <laughs> um, Littlefinger came from the... Who was he? He was like a sellsword who fought in oh, the War of the Nine Penny Kings. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Lucy. that sort of got their family an inn and uh, Littlefinger was fostered at River Run and he grew up with Catelyn and Lysa. And Edmure. 
and Edmure. Don't forget Edmure. Everyone forgets Edmure. And <laughs> Littlefinger had a big old crush on Catelyn. Who wouldn't? Uh, and he tried to be a hero. And he tried to challenge Brandon Stark for her hand and to be like the stories, just like Sansa Stark. He believed that he could, you know, fight this big, scary northerner and yeah, win the love of his life. Because he was the good guy. He was the underdog. He was the... Protagonist. Yeah. So has it pronounced protagonist? Protagonist. <laughs> <laughs> but he lost. You know, he got BTFO'd. He got bead right tfo <laughs> And he got scarred, and he was uh, disabused of his illusions about how the world works. And that's his supervillain origin story, because he learned that you can't get what you want by being a nice dude. You've got to be a sociopathic dickhead. Yeah, he Peter, l- do you think you might be like swinging the pendulum a little too far <laughs> the other direction? You think, no, no, you have to be a You have to monster. be like the worst. <laughs> yeah, right. No, he yeah he learned that nice guys finish last. Yes, and that you have to be uh, an alpha Chad, uh, top G. Yes, uh, with with a Bugatti um, <laughs> to to go anywhere in life. I, I think what's so interesting is that he goes into owning brothels, and so you know because he failed to get the girl, he literally owns women. He literally <laughs> owns women in the most like controlling. You know, that's Fucked what he up. does now. And, you know, he tries to control Sansa in the same way that he wanted to control Catelyn. Yeah. A lot of women issues with this guy. A lot of women a lot of women issues with a lot of these characters. Yeah, weird. Weird. He, uh... <laughs> oh, he starts a war. Should we mention that oh, he starts yeah, a war? Oh, yeah, I guess he starts a war. I mean, there's also that. His lie about the Valyrian steel dagger uh, causes Catelyn to arrest Tyrion because... Littlefinger said it was Tyrion's, and he also gets Lysa to poison John Aaron. He also gets Ned to investigate the incest. Yeah. Um, he also probably got Stannis to investigate it in the first place. Yeah. I'm not sure about that, but probably. Plausible. So he really went out of his way to destabilize the kingdom and start a war for his own personal advancement. He also had uh, Sansa's friend Jane Poole put into his service. Service, and he shall we say put the child in a brothel and trained her to be a sex slave, and later shipped her off to a sadistic monster. I think he might be bad. I think this guy might not be good news. And there's really like no justification. Like, like you know, it's all about his personal resentments. But like, there's not even the veneer of like this is justice or honor. Like he's just fucking over the world because a girl rejected him. Damn. So he got black pilled. <laughs> he got he got <laughs> little fingered. Um. I think that he. I think that he's a um, bad he guy. He also had a king murdered. Um, Wait, which king did he murder? Joffrey. Uh, no. No. That was the Tyrell. Well, no. That, well, yeah, he did that. I guess. <laughs> I feel like that was the Tyrells, and he was like, "Yeah, good idea. I'll tag along." Yeah, I'm in on that. Uh, a lot of people think that it wasn't even Joffrey that he was trying to kill. Who was he trying to kill then? I don't know the theory. So it goes that um. It was intended for... Di- it was Tyrion's Pice of Sly that... Jo- uh, Sly- Pice of Sly. Pice of Sly. Good name for a band. <laughs> it was Tyrion's Slice of Pie that um, Joffrey had just eaten when he died. Do you really think that only one slice of the pie was poisoned? The cream was applied after the pie was sliced. <laughs> no, no, no. Hear me out. This is real. <laughs> Look, your use of the word real. <laughs> I was going to bring this up. It's a bit generous. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is fiction. <laughs> it's fiction within fiction. You know, fiction. you know, Peter definitely has reason to want Tyrion dead. Yeah, because Tyrion knows that Peter's lie got Tyrion arrested, so yeah. Tyrion might want revenge. And also Tyrion is just sort of generally a political rival. Yeah, and he's like the smartest other guy in King's Landing. I, I think Littlefinger could arrange Tyrion's death. If he really wanted to, like the other, the other, like Peter's weakness is his sort of ego and his arrogance. Like, like Littlefinger taunts Tyrion 
yeah. by like showing off his dagger. Because Littlefinger knows Tyrion knows. Yeah. And Littlefinger knows that Tyrion knows that Littlefinger knows that Tyrion knows <laughs> ad infinitum. So like like his ego will be the end of him, I think. Oh, totally. He's going to, you know, he'll raise Sansa up to be a little him, you know, look at her manipulate those people. Oh, aren't I so clever? And then, <laughs> and then he's going to be like, ah, but I'm still top G. There's no way I'm being done in. And then she does him in. And he's like, what? No. What the fuck? Yeah. You're you're a woman. You're, I'm supposed to own you. Very poetic for Sansa to get Littlefinger killed, probably with his own dagger. Do you think Arya will be involved, like in the show? I really hope not. Because they don't really I'm have so anything sour to on do that. with each other, do they? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that might be the plot line that I'm most angry about. Is the like Sansa Arya plot line with Littlefinger in season seven? It just didn't make any sense. So fucking dumb. And it just sort of undermined all their characters. It made all of them look incompetent. It just sucked. And the whole thing was resolved off screen by omnipotence. They never well, they never explained what happened. It's good storytelling. <laughs> like wasn't that there was like a cut scene, wasn't yes, there, where yes. Bran like talked, but I guess they you know, Bran they talked it was in it boring. so they had to remove it. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Well, um, yeah, I agree with that placement. That's it's pretty good. Yeah. He should probably be a little bit lower than Kyburn. Yes. Guess. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I think we've done it. I think we've solved moral philosophy, Gladys. True. Take that, um, Kant. <laughs> oh, oh, the quota. <laughs> that was a perfect callback. Nice. We thank, did it. Thank you. We've picked. Thank you, everybody, for watching. <laughs> Got a few more super chats that you might want to. Like, uh, thanks for the super chat from uh, Jack, who says yeah. Oh and yeah. <laughs> thank you for the super chat from Patrick, who says Peter is the incel of the Game of Thrones world. I suppose so. I suppose so. so Tyrion's a bit of an incel too. <laughs> uh yeah. He's got a lot of women issues. So does Tywin. Never touched another woman after Joanna died, huh? You uh, sure about that, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> That's what Cersei believes. And anything Cersei believes is true. Uh, do you want to continue this at another part? At another time, Gladys? On another day? On another morrow? On another morn? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I, I, we also need to do our Buffy review. Yeah. True. We also need to... Um, There are so many things we need to do. There's a lot of things to do. Like play the Telltale games? Yeah, I would love to play the Telltale games. Yeah, like what, what other... Ultra FX Gl- Glidus live streams. Would you guys like to see? Like, do you want us to talk about Song of Ice and Fire characters, theories, play games, review Buffy? <laughs> like, what do you want to see? Put in the comments. Shortish in the live chat says, "Will this stream be on YouTube when it's finished?" Yes, it's it on will. YouTube before it's finished. It is. Um, I think it'll be on the podcast. Like, should I put this on the Ultra FX podcast? Do you reckon? Am I worthy? Uh, am I? <laughs> I don't know what it is anymore, you know? The podcast is just whatever happens. Yeah, I, th- I think it'll be on the podcast feed. Um, but otherwise, you know, keep it real. Um, eat cauliflower. It's and good for you. do push-ups. You don't have to do push-ups. I, I, mean, I, I mean, why not? <laughs> Too busy eating cauliflower. <laughs> Yeah, but you eat cauliflower while you do push-ups. You oh put my the God. cauliflower Holy and you shit. get munch. The multitasking. Munch, munch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 